All right, great. We are going live. Beautiful, we should be live here pretty soon. Nice. Welcome. Welcome team. Happy holidays. Hopefully the chat is connected. Let me know if you're here. Wonderful. We're going to go ahead and continue getting set up here. I want to make sure I have everything available here at my fingertips. We've got flowers. Pull up the broadcast here. Oh, I just want to see. Meetings. Oh, here we go. Nice. That way I can see it live. Okay, good. Okay, I can see myself. Thanks, everybody. Happy holidays. If your soil is Oops. missing one. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody. Great. I'm going to see here if every, if anybody's here. Um, chat Moringa, if you see this, okay, cool, wonderful. We're here. Hopefully, you guys can hear me well. Let me know if you can hear me and sound is good. If you would like to get in, uh, yeah. I did, I don't think I set the waiting room. I, I think I turned the waiting room off, but if you want to get in here with me, I'd be more than happy to have you come in here. Um, let me go ahead and share the link. If you'd like to get in the room and you'd like to talk and ask question, here's the link, you will be live on YouTube. If you'd like to come in, um, let me make sure we have everything. Where's my telephono? Uh, I have one of them here. I just want to set the other one up here. Ask any questions if you need in the chat. I'm just looking for my phone. This is the uh, this is the new store here. Uh, we're just getting the store set up. Could probably turn this light on. It doesn't really look that. Yeah. I know it kind of has like a nice look to it. Well, we're here. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, I'm ready. To answer any questions, I'm also going to get set up here in, um, in the chat here. Um, we're open. We may have a few people come in. We'll see. So I just wanted to also say hi to everybody on this beautiful holy day. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our Facebook group. Let's go live. We've got about 
twenty five hundred people in the um, in the Facebook, and we're really just getting it going now. Beautiful. Oh, we got the Christmas tree there too. Okay, good. Um, this. Let's do. Um, Grow more fruit and veggies. We got the store. You can see I'm getting the store set up here. And it's really just the start. I'm getting the, the drapes set up. I got the I got some more drapes here. We're just working on getting this place really cleaned up. We're gonna get the the countertops really nicely set up. I want you guys to see a little bit of the background behind the scenes. We have all of our labels. We have a, uh, a starter kit or a, a, a microgreens kit that's getting started here. This is the start of the microgreens kit. And we will answer any questions for you. Just let me know if you'd like to get in here. If you can, if you can see the chat, please somebody say hi in the chat. Oh, welcome. Okay, so we got our Facebook here. Beautiful. And we'll see if anybody has any questions. Let's see if we can get on TikTok. I got kicked off at of TikTok. A few months ago when I was going live, I was talking about some real stuff. And so they kicked me out. But I got a new one. Getting into TikTok. The new TikTok is we is at we grow moringa. So now the Instagram matches. The Instagram match matches the um The handles. So we're just getting back on TikTok. I wonder if I can go live. No, I don't have enough followers yet. But maybe I can go ahead and go on Instagram then. If you have any questions, let me know. We're, we're really focusing on business. Um, we have lots of little things like tea, flowers, spice, but even, even more importantly too, is, is, is the training, is the training platform and teaching you all where we are and what we're doing with, uh, the next step. Really is nice. It's actually starting to get a little sunny out today. And let's see here. We'll go to the the the, the grow moringa. We can go live on Instagram. Nice. We want to grow more fruits and veggies. Let's see. Let's see if that's clean. 
Thanks, everybody. Welcome. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody. We are learning how to grow. Oh, hey, Emily is in here. Welcome. Just so you know, you are live on YouTube as well. Would love to answer your questions. And I can change the view here. Thanks, Emily. Did you have any questions for me, Emily? Want to learn how to grow Moringa? Maybe start your own Moringa business. Welcome. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. Happy holidays. We are at the store. We're at the store. If you would like to um, pick up anything that you need, Moringa, we have everything available right here in person. Uh, we are in Tampa, Florida. Let me see if I can move this here. Just a little bit over. It's pretty good. Nice. Good. And we have a few questions possibly on Instagram. Please let me know if you have any questions. Essentially wanting you to just see the store. We're starting to get the store set up. We're open 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. here in Plant City. And uh you know, we're in the middle of winter. So what we're trying to do is figure out our products because October, November, December, we sold tens of thousands of dollars worth of Moringa. And now the trees slow down. So what do we do? So, I mean, do we just buy in Moringa from import? Um, when most of our customers really love the fact that when they purchase Moringa from us, they, they, they get it fresh and they get it local. So that's the thing is I'm seeking fresh and local Moringa from our members. And um, if you have fresh and local Moringa, we would love to use your supply. We need it because we're really low. My 50 trees that I have here, they've pretty much all been harvested. Uh, thankfully, we haven't gotten a frost or anything like that. And um, and so the trees are still able to grow. It did get down to like 40 and we had a little bit of a dam little bit of a damage, but not too much. I'm just going to get some water. Oh, here I have some water right here. Uh, ask me any questions if you have any, if you'd like to get in. Um, on the meeting here, if you'd like to get in, ask questions, you're more than welcome to. I have the um, the the YouTube or the um, I have the link to the Zoom actually right there in the YouTube chat. And if you'd like to get in, actually, I could put it into Facebook as well. But we're pretty much doing the same thing, so. Great. Oh, Supreme Personality, thanks for asking. Um, I'm glad that you asked because we have the flowers right here. Yes, actually. So the question is, do Moringa uh, have flowers? Yes, absolutely. So what I do is I dry the flowers. And the first thing that I do when I'm opening this up is I'm looking for any pests, any bugs, anything like that, which I don't see, which is good. We're dealing with an organic product. So some of the ways that you can actually mitigate uh, pests is through freezing. So once things are once things are uh, dried like this, you can see the flower here. See these beautiful little flowers. They definitely uh, produce flowers, actually. The flowers turn into drumsticks. So yes, absolutely. Oh man, that's a good question. So. Um, Supreme Personality is asking, how much honey does one Moringa plant make? And so, you know, um, honeybees, honeybees um, are really not effective, as effective as other bees, like mason bees and other, other bees for pollinating. 
but honeybees make honey, which we all love. So to pollinate, we all we we depend on the other 180 different species of of bees. But to make honey, the question is, is how much honey does one moringa plant make? And one hive usually makes about eight pounds or one gallon of honey in a year. So if you've got 50 hives, you know, I'm a beekeeper. So if you've got 50 hives, typically you're going to make about 50 gallons of honey that year. Um, so, so if we had a field of Moringa and they're all blooming and they all have flowers, uh, you could potentially get Moringa honey that season. Absolutely. One hive makes about eight pounds a year. So other pollinators are most definitely better than honeybees. Honeybees are low, low on the spectrum for pollinators. They're, they're, they produce honey, but they don't actually really pollinate very well. They're too busy, you know, getting, getting it for themselves versus, say, spreading it. Now, they do maybe a small percent, 8 to 10 percent, but like a mason bee is doing, you know, 80 percent pollination compared to the honeybee. So lots of lots of flowers, lots of flowers are coming off of off of the marina tree. Now these are dried. And so what I'll do is I'll put them in a package and um and we don't necessarily have flowers on the website right now, but of course if you came in the store, we have a small amount of flowers uh just here at the store. And that's what I'm doing here is really just getting the um, the store set up. You can see I'm getting the store set up behind me. So um, Jack is actually asking to get in here. Um, if if you go to YouTube, Jack, I would love to have you come into the room. Uh, I actually have the link. I have the link uh, for this video in YouTube right now if you'd like to come in. Um, come into YouTube or link. Great. And then Emily here is asking, thank you very much for coming in, Emily. Emily is actually here in, in the, in the zoom. And, um, so how long does it usually take for a Moringa tree to produce flowers? Now from a cutting that moringa tree could produce flowers very quickly um, within a couple months. Actually, I've seen a moringa cutting root at the same time it's producing flowers. Sometimes it'll produce flowers faster uh, than, than even the root. So it can produce a flower uh, within a, the first couple months. Now, if you're going from seed and you've got a small tree, you can get about, you know, a nice set of flowers within the first year. But just know that your flowers are going to go into drumstick. If they get pollinated, your flowers are gonna go to seed. So what happens is if you're looking to get greens, you may not, have flowers. What I'm trying to say is the tree can really only do one thing at a time. It's going to grow. And then once it produces flowers, it stops growing. It's pushing out flowers. And those flowers are then going to be pollinated to produce the sexual reproductive organs, the seeds, the seed pods. And the tree is going to stop growing. So a lot of people are like, hey, my tree stop producing uh, greens. And then it's like, but it has a lot of flowers or my tree lost all of its, all of its leaves or all of the leaves are yellowing, but it has a lot of drumsticks on it. And that's the thing is the tree is only going to do one or the other. So 
If you're really trying to get the greens like we are here, let's see here, do I have, have some greens? I have a little bit of greens. Oh, here. We've got, we've got the greens in the loose form like this. And then we have it in the, uh, the vacuum, the vacuum seal like this. So, oh, welcome. Adrian from Mexico is here. Salud, salud. Feliz Navidad. Wonderful. Let's see here. Um, good, good. Emily is also asking, do you find that the Moringa branches are easy to break? Yes, that's actually why I love Moringa so much is because it does break very easy. It's I tell people all the time, it's it's like perfect for humans because it's malleable by the hand. I can work it with the hand. One of the reasons why I love working with Moringa so much is because it is very easily broken with the hand. I go out there with a hand saw. I don't need uh, you know machines or big equipment or things like that. But one of the reasons why I love working with Moringa is because it is very easy to break. But then again, it will be very easy to break in high winds or hurricanes and things like that. So um, it will, it will end up doing that. Hopefully everybody's having a great day. Let's see if I can go ahead and see here, if I can go live with Jack. If he's here, went ahead and, and hit okay it might split the screen and we might be able to go live together. We'll see. Um, if you would like to join me on the Zoom link, you're more than welcome to join us in the YouTube channel. I'm also here answering questions here in the chat. Where are you, Emily? What area are you in for growing and what do you wanna do uh, with Moringa, do you want to grow it for yourself or do you just want to do you want to grow uh, a business? I'm really interested in finding more people that want to go go all in with Moringa like I have. Who's going to go all in? Who's all in? Who's all in? Notice one of the one of the things that. I've done in my business is focus on one plant. There's so many plants out there. Let's see here. We can maybe even link up with, with Jack. It might, I'm not sure. I've never really, I've never really split it, split it here. Except, except it might do it. I don't know. Uh, I might not have the settings, but Jack, if you'd like to come into the, into the zoom, would love to have you. It's actually on the YouTube. If you go to YouTube, if you go to our Grow Moringa YouTube channel, uh, the link is in there. And Emily got in, so okay, so the chat is working. Okay, good. Um, Adrian, I was thinking about Adrian the other day because it's like we're really low on greens, you know. And Adrian has really really great looking greens. Wanting to know a little bit more what's going on with you, Adrian. Would love to check in with you in the members area, of course. Um, if you have any trouble getting in, you can always uh, WhatsApp me and uh, we we want to keep in touch. I know that you were kind of going through um, figuring out what you wanted to do with, with your agriculture business and what you wanted to do, especially with Moringa and what the focus is. Um, because Adrian is a Moringa farmer. He's got several hectares in, in Mexico. And he's trying to figure out how how to create a market for that. And I think he even a couple months ago said um, he's really just been feeding his cows. He's got some nice uh, water buffaloes, and uh, he's just been feeding his cows and feeding his 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 farm animals. So maybe that's supplying a better a better meat product, maybe uh, a more healthier animal with with less antibiotics. You know, that could be the case. Oh, good. 
Oh, good. Emily says that um, she's in Fort Pierce. I love that area. And that's in Florida on about almost an acre, almost an acre with three Moringa trees, figuring out, you know, what you can do with it maybe as a business. That's great. Um, I'm also still figuring things out, you know, how to grow and scale this business beyond $200,000, $250,000 a year um, at this scale with one person kind of really working the farming, the making of the products and the selling. So I'm trying to get the company to a million to 10 million, but first, you know, trying to just hit a million. How do we get this company and this collective to, to growing to a million dollars a year? And that's really what we're figuring out. Um, Because we have several members in the members area that have a uh, supply, right? And it's just a matter of organizing, you know, who has what inventory, you know, making sure that people are doing it safely, making sure that things are, um, you know, to code and making sure that they're doing everything right. So that way the greens are green. You know, you don't want to have... You don't want to have any blackness or mold or or bacteria or fungus or anything really in the in the leaves. You really want to try to create a really, really nice, vibrant green without sticks and stems. And so I'm teaching people how to how to how to how to get from the tree to the final product. So it even, you know, in, entails having a label. You know, how do you how do you how do you make a label? Um, you know, we have, we have labels here that we print and we use, you know, like Avery is one of those companies that has the ability to print labels and you can even print this right, right from your home printer. Right. And I have some of the files and some of the, um, the information that you would need on your labels inside the members area. And that's what I do with the members is really get them trained up to, to launch their Moringa company and really helping them as much as I can to teach and educate and tra train. So wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Emily also has some land in Jamaica. We have some members actually in Jamaica as well. Um, one of the members has a home very close to here. And is has some property, I think, on the southeast corner of Jamaica. <clears throat> he showed me some pictures. His son is actually an architect. Uh, his wife used to serve Bob Marley in her restaurant. Uh, pretty cool. Small world. Uh, so it's really cool just meeting people. That's why I'm here. I'm here. I'm a people person. I really love being around people and uh, really figuring out how to help people the most kind of go through the trials and tribulations of what I've experienced in my business uh, in order to essentially launch this, this Moringa company. So doing some of the things even, even, just learning, you know, learning like cost, you know, because we have a bunch of different products on the website. We make, you know, about 50 different products, um, but it can be a little overwhelming. And if you want to just start with one thing, the first thing that I would say, if you can, if you can, if you can do loose leaf, just pure straight loose leaf, like what we just showed if you can even just get it in a small bag like that, I mean, this is $5. You know, we're, we're selling this for $5. You can do something even, uh, one of the members um, asked, you know, how much, how much should they charge? And um, I like to do like a buy two, get one free. A lot of times, you know, if you buy two of the items, you get one for free. That's also very good. See, I, I have a couple of years of, of experience at the farmer's market and how to make all of these products, making 
100 and 150K a year at the farmer's market, then being able to do a little bit of a farmer's market and also having a store. I, I opened my first store in 2018, uh, 2018 in St. Pete. And that was kind of one of the first places that I kind of set up shop, began to 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 see people learn the, the questions, getting the answers, um, and also taking some time to start writing my book. Which I have. Let me make sure I have everything that I need. Please, Emily, ask some more questions uh, if you if you have any, and also in the chat here, ask questions here. Um, it's a beautiful, it's a chill, chill Christmas day. If you have any questions here in Instagram, please ask it in the chat. This is my book, Grow Moringa, The Ultimate Guide. This is something that I wrote for, for you to learn all the things essentially that I went through uh, growing this company. Oh, good. Emily's asking, is my book finished? It is. Yes. Yes. I just finished the book in August and um, it was, it was fun. It was, it was intense. I mean, this is uh, 10 years, almost 10 years of, of just getting this out in a way that, that is somewhat understandable. <laughs> uh, we are going through a second edition of this book now with an editor to help me really kind of hone in on um, some of the intricacies to what I'm really trying to teach. And to be honest, what I'm really, really trying to move forward into this business as I grow and expand is is teaming up with with farmers across the world you know so i've teamed up with adrian in mexico and we've done some deals i'm also uh working with other farmers in nicaragua um africa india you know there's lots of lots of growers around the world that are interested in getting their moringa into the market here in the usa and that's what i'm also trying to create is is a place where people can come in and um and buy because i get questions for for large large orders and i want to be able to put all those people in the room as a as a connoisseur as a proprietor as a broker you know those are some of the things that i'm working on uh to to really expand this moringa industry Yeah, so the book um, is on Amazon, or at least it was on Amazon um, for the first couple months. It's just like every time I turn around, there's some sort of um, registration or having to verify or something like that. And and um, I don't know, it may have recently just been taken taken down, um, but I have it on my website. That's the thing is I'm really focused on selling on my own website, um, I get to see all of the all of those profits. That helps me the best. You know, Amazon is 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 great. Don't get me wrong for books. The Kindle, um, I have to go check out the Kindle account. I think it's still good. It's just you know getting around to all the accounts. You know, uh, my own website is really like my main focus, my main hub, and. Um, and uh, it took a while. We, we we got kicked off of TikTok. We got kicked off of Etsy, got kicked off of Instagram shop. You know, it's just all the little things you need to say it, say it right. If you're saying anything like capsules or powder or anything health related, um, you know, big companies that are also competing with with you in that way or going to essentially try to shut you down. So it's it's about the wording, it's about the things that you don't say, which is one of the reasons why um I'm learning to to simplify. I'm learning how to simplify what I say, how I say it, what's on the label, what's not on the label, you know, because even saying something like um uh anti-inflammatory or organic 
or um, there's like a whole list of like red flag, red flag things that you can and cannot say um, essentially that are considered claims. Uh, I do have my own ISBN number. Yes, I do. I do have my own ISBN number. That's what I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> I'm very independent, you know, so it's like uh, people call me and buy books. Uh, people order books on my website. It's just, you know, Amazon is a beast. And every time I turn around, um, there's a new notification about something needing to be verified or my ID or, or um, this red flag or that red flag. And when you're dealing with like 20 different platforms, it can be a little bit much, but at least I have it on my website. And that's really all I care about is that it's at growmoringa.com. And that's really the most important thing for me is making sure that I have everything on my website um, that's working. So, so please, you're more than welcome to go to my website and get it directly from me without having to necessarily use Amazon. But I know people are just used to using Amazon. They have it right there. And uh, yeah, it's easy. And we did. We did get a bunch of sales. I think we got like 20 or 30 book sales on Amazon. I have to double check. Like I said, I have to go into into that every time I turn around I'm having to get into a new new platform to make sure that this is working and that is working and half the time technology and things ends up canceling or unregistering or you know things like that because um you know like this this book it I it was me I I was the editor I was the chief the writer the uh the everything in this book so if there's something in here that that you know gets red flagged it's it, it just gets taken down I mean, we're talking health we're talking wellness so it happens it's just the world that we live in right so um thanks emily i'm glad that you're here asking really great questions um do you have a book? Uh, are, are you are you into books? Uh, have you written a book? Um, oh, good. Jack is in here. Welcome. And Moti is in here. Wow. Hey, Moti, welcome. At any time, if anybody would like to uh, turn on their sound or turn on their video, we can we can share screen. You're more than welcome. You are on YouTube. Just so you know, you are on YouTube if you're here in the Zoom. And so you're more than welcome. I see Moti just unmuted. Confessions from the soil. Chosen. Hello. Oh, Hi, Andrea. Sandra, can you hear me? I can. Perfect. Welcome. So today I was actually going to be looking at your biostimulant. Good. And I can switch over my video to... No, I can see you. I can see you good. No, I mean, I can switch it to my my microscope. Oh, cool. So just FYI. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, we were going to talk about that too. Good. I'm just figuring yeah. out, um, about, out the, about the, um, the screen here. No worries. So I'm going to load this up while you're talking. Okay, cool. Anytime you want, I can make you the main, the main screen. So that way we can all see kind of what's going on. So she actually, um, we met at the Permaculture Convergence a couple of weeks ago. I actually have my shirt on right here. Got my shirt right here. Might as, might as well. It's getting a little warm now. And um, we had a chance to to talk about uh, soil, microbial, mi microbes, um, and really what's going on with the biostimulant. So this would be a really good time to talk about it as well. Got got me on the spot. I want to see what's going on inside. Is it alive? Is it is it working? Is it is it everything that we say it is? <laughs> Can we improve on it? Does what happens when things get bottled? And so what we're talking about is is this because we do have a lot of uh, testimonials, um, and so we want to see and really see is the science real? You know, we make sure that that they're being fed. We talked a little bit about this being an anaerobic. No, not an anaerobic, not an anaerobic, an aerobic, an aerobic. Uh, well, it's actually an aerobic uh, facultative. There you go. Yeah. So I'm, so these I'm microbes, all these things too. 
Mm -hmm. So these microbes can go back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. The Teach. facultative ones. Teach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we need. We need more soil science, scientists. I met somebody, because we all know Elaine, Elaine Ingham. And I met somebody that s said that they, and I have a document that was like predating some of Elaine's work, uh, which is crazy, like from the 70s and 80s um, and, and being a part of the initial permaculture movement is really what all of this is, is really getting down into the science of soil, which is what I'm really interested in, because this is kind of like the main, main product that I really want to, to sell, that I want to talk about because it's going to help open up uh, my market from just talking to people that that buy moringa to people that are growing potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, garlic, you know, and all the other things. How can we help them become more successful with growing? So um, <clears throat> I'm interested to see see here what we've got. And and where are you Moti? Are you you said you're close to the East Coast? Yeah, I'm in Sebastian. Sebastian, oh, I love Sebastian. Yeah, yeah Sebastian, new beautiful here. Sebastian Inlet. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey, Chef Phil's here. Welcome. We got to see Chef Phil actually at the Permaculture Convergence as well. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. If you'd like to hop in on the chat, we also have um, some guests here. Into oh yes, Jack. If you would like to list your website and brochures, absolutely. Uh, you are more than welcome to. Let's see here. If you if you go into the um into the chat um on the YouTube, you're more than welcome to post and that will that will show up on the YouTube if you wanna if you wanna post. It's just us in here. It's just I know that we're we're streaming on YouTube, but it's just us in here. So if you put anything in this chat, it's only gonna be the three or four of us that see it. But you're more than welcome to list your website. Jack is a member of ours. He's in Arizona. He's been expanding his operation. Uh, would love to hear more about what he did this season. And let's see here. I'm just trying to figure out this uh, this chat bar and why it's not set up right. Moti's getting set up with her with her. Um... Oh, this is going to be dope. She's getting set up with her um, mic with her. Um, microscope. She's essentially going to go live with us and she, we're going to see what's going on inside of the biostimulant. This is made from Moringa leaves. And Jack says the book is live on Amazon. Oh, you want to list the book on your website and brochures. The best way to receive income from those sales is actually using my website, the shop, as as your link. So Jack saying, how does he list? I don't know how to do the affiliate thing on Amazon. If you're an affiliate through Amazon, I'm sure you could grab my link and turn that into an affiliate. But of course, Jack, you already have a coupon and an affiliate link with us. And you're more than welcome to just take people to there. You can have multiple ways of doing it. It can be, it can be through uh, the main website, um, through the shop, and you can also have another link say shop, grow moringa on Amazon. So yeah, you can you can do that, and we can talk more about that in the members area. I'm going to be live uh, 8 p.m. Eastern for the members specifically um, on Wednesday. Helena. Oh, good. Oh, Helena. Oh, good. Okay. So I've been saying Emily this whole time. Maybe you're on Emily's computer. Cool. They've written books as well. Awesome. Beautiful. Hopefully Moti is all right. Yeah. Can, can you okay. see my screen? Let's sit here. I'm going to change the view. I'm going to go to speaker. Oh, Whoa. there it is. Okay. No way. What is going on here? So it's really cool. 
is I have an epifluorescence on this microscope. So I'll switch over to that soon. And what we'll be able to see is the phosphorus as well. If you wow. Have a stimulant. Wow. So like, so I, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at this right now. I wonder if I can somehow share my screen. Um, because I can see this, this is in the zoom, but I, I don't know if people can see this actually live on YouTube. If, if everybody, do I need to share my screen maybe? Oh no, it's on. Okay. So you just have to figure out how to get mine to show to everyone else. I think it, I think it is on it. I think it is. I'm looking at it live on YouTube and it's popped oh. up. It just took it a really second did. to really get in there, but it's on now. Everybody can see this essentially live. I'm pretty sure it was kind of jumpy for a second there, but I think it's just mostly your, your camera. Um, but I can see it. Okay. So now this is a uh, epifluorescence. Mm -hmm. and what does so that tell us? We're, we're going to see if there's phosphorus in here with the epi. And yes. so when you see that yellow, the brighter yellow, mm -hmm. that's the phosphorus coming through on the organic matter of the moringa. Wow. So that okay. shows that we have phosphorus in the biostimulant. That's good. And PK, yeah. I was talking to a Kobo about it, the, the proprietor, the maker, the, the developer of this, of this product. And I'm asking him about, you know, how to talk about this, you know, um, <laughs> Do we do, can we call it a fertilizer? I'm learning more about the fertilizer industry, about the rules and regulations of, of what you can and cannot say. And also the differences between NPK and say like a soil conditioner or a soil enhancement and things like that. So this is really beautiful to be able to see. Um, I'm pretty so sure that it's popping through on the YouTube, on the YouTube live as well. It's kind of jumpy, but this is cool. So you took the light off and now we're kind of really seeing. Yeah. So we're back to Brightfield now and I'm at a 40X objective, so 400 times in. And what we're seeing mostly with your biostimulant, because I've been looking at it for a while now, and it's a lot of bacteria, which we love, that cockeye bacteria. And so the little, little dots that you see everywhere moving, that's the, the beneficial bacteria. And then when you see those long strands, those like tubes almost, mm -hmm. that's going to be your lactobacillus that we all want, right? Mm -hmm. That like kind of probiotic bacteria. And oh, then cool. when you see these like clumps here, that's the organic matter. That's the moringa. Mm. And as we scroll through, we'll eventually see some of the minerals, you know, they're shiny, they look like diamonds. Um, so you're going to see a lot of minerals like right there. I don't know if you can see that. I see that. Yeah, I see that, that diamond one. That's a mineral. So that's coming from the actual moringa uh, powder, right? And that's the organic matter. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to show through with all that minerals. And when we put on that epifluorescence, that's when it showed us that phosphorus. Phosphorus. Yep. So I've been trying to, to, to kind of figure out how to talk about it, associate what people understand because people know NPK. Mm. Um, I kind of know a little bit about it. I never really dealt too much with fertilizers, but I'm really interested in getting into this industry. NPK, that's nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. Yes. And so, yeah. and I just did a video about this yesterday where we were talking about the four pillars of soil, uh, you know, being the, the microbes and especially like the minerals and the, the bacteria Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is really interesting. Now, now this liquid extract, this is made from fresh greens. Oh, okay. Not the powder. Not the powder, but okay. you can, you can uh, make something similar to this with powder. And, um, and so here, this powder that we have in here that comes with the bio box is actually much more of like a whole tree powder. It's not even a green powder. It's more of like a rusty, um, 
like a reddish, almost kind of very, very similar to my, my spice uh, because we took larger parts of the tree, dried it in a, in a big, huge dryer. It goes through an assembly line. So that way it's USDA certified organic uh, because it essentially it has to be dry in a certain amount of time um, because they, they can't have any mold or bacteria or anything potentially forming. And so through that process, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of Moringa on the shelf is not even green or, or is even more brown than we would like. Because when we open it and we look at it, we're like kind of, ooh, you know, it's not even like green, green. And that's just because the safety of big, huge operations and big, huge farms and industrial places, they've got to get it through and dried really quickly. So they don't have like a very small, like mom and pop shop like we do, where we can just throw it on on racks and dry it. Um, and it and it comes out green. It's one of the reasons why our sales are so good is because we have some of the only green product and we make sure that it's dried within six to 12 hours. The outside of it is crispy and dry. Uh, but um, just wanting to explain a little bit more about this particular product, this bio box, having the powder in it, it's more of like a whole tree powder. And then the... Um, the extract being much more of throwing fresh greens in there. So I'm, I'm loving this view here. I just want to make sure that it's coming up on, on YouTube. So, so when you were talking about MPK, you're talking about the macronutrients, which of course is important. And that's what we're used to in our, in our past, right? With industrial evolution, with synthetic chemical fertilizers. But what is different with, your biostimulant and where we're headed and more regenerative is these microorganisms you're looking at, the bacteria and the fungi can extract the, um, the other nutrients that are in here. And so it goes beyond NPK, and, but that can only be done with the bacteria. So your bacteria in here is actually getting those micronutrients that are available in the parent rock material, it's able to extract that into our plant. And that's what we weren't able to get with the industrial synthetic chemical fertilizers. That's really just like force feeding our plants, the NPK. So NPK is super important, but it's the, the micronutrients are almost as if not more important because that's going to bring our plants to that higher level of health that releases those secondary metabolites that bring us our medicinal compounds and everything that we're looking for. So these bacteria that you're looking at is the reason those micronutrients can be available to your plant. You said it, you said it. That's right. And that's the difference is that we're talking about these four pillars, the micro or the macro, the macro being the NPK and the micro being more so of this um, living bacteria, which is really eating, eating them. You're saying that they're eating the macro, like they're eating the NPK, which is actually allowing it to be more bioavailable. Well, no, they're able to extract like, um, selenium and molybdenum and all the other micronutrients. There's a whole list of them. I don't have them memorized right now, but all those other micronutrients that we're not used to hearing about as much on top of NPK, those, that biology can extract that um, and then deliver it to the plants, those microorganisms can. So those micronutrients uh, is actually what's bringing our plant health higher past that just macro NPK. And so when we do synthetic fertilizers, we're only getting NPK, which is not the whole story. And it doesn't bring the plants to its full potential, especially with like medicinal compounds, taste, flavor. Oh, this is so good to hear. This, this makes me feel so great. And just seeing this is really powerful. We're going to be able to take this video um, and share this so much. This is really impressive. I'm really grateful for you having this technology to be able to show us. I can see these crystals. I can see the larger chunks of say like 
the leaf matter that's in there, which also has a lot of really good things like the chlorophyll and, and, um, um, and so this is, this is beautiful. I'm really oh, so happy God. that you're here. This is just so, such an impromptu and that's, yeah, it is. I was like, oh, let's just call Perfect. How are you doing today? Have a happy holiday? Is it kind of quiet there? Are you, are you, um, are you at, the, at Kashi Ashram? And I guess it's a different name now. It's called Chosen, right? Yeah, at Chosen. I'm just at my house and I was planning to get on the microscope today specifically and looking at your biostimulant since I had the day off. Yeah. And then you popped on and I'm like, well, I can show it live. Yes. I might as well just do this now. Let's do it. This is but what it's, it's all about. It's just connecting. Yeah. It's just being available. This is what I find, just making sure that I'm there at the markets, at the convergence, at the events. And also going live here, taking the time to show show what's going on here. This is beautiful. So Kendrick, I just looked up so I don't have it memorized the micronutrients that we're getting. So uh -huh. it's boron, zinc, manganese, iron, copper, molybdenum, and chlorine. And so if you're using a biostimulant like this, you're getting NPK, but you're also getting the micronutrients from the biology. So you're getting like a full spectrum of health through the biology to whatever you're using this on, your plants, which then ultimately bring you to the higher pillars of health for what you're growing. Great. You know, uh, right now, Hokobo and I, we, we've been talking about some of these trials and tests. Um, we have some large farms in Georgia that are cotton farms that are using the biostimulant now. Um, in the hundreds and hundreds of gallons. Um, we also have farmers that are putting the powder down uh, in large amounts by, by the container ship on their properties. Uh, and they're using it for other crops. You know, they're using the, the biostimulant, the powder and the extract that we're making from the Moringa to be used on their tomatoes, cotton, peppers, potatoes, corn, wheat, soy, uh, onions, garlic. It does really well for root crops and it does really well. And this is kind of what I'm trying to figure out with the Kobo and we talk about it every day so we can get a better idea of how to explain it right. You know, some of the things that make plants shoot up and have a stiffness to it, that's the nitrogen, right? And, and isn't our environment mostly made of, of nitrogen. We actually have more nitrogen in the yes. environment. Yes, yes, 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. And right. so it's all about how do we get that nitrogen in our plants? And so with uh, industrial revolution and because of war and the World War I and World War II, we did the Har Harbor Bosch process, which they figured out how to grab that nitrogen and atmospheric nitrogen into a chemical chemistry. And so that's what creates our synthetic chemical fertilizers, which it was really for war. It was really for ammunition first. Right. And then after the war, we got that to grow our food. And so it was always through biology. In fact, it was Carl Harbor that said when he was receiving his uh, Nobel Prize for this method, he said it's you know, to paraphrase, he said, you know, this isn't the answer. This isn't the final answer. Um, it is through how nature does it, which we still don't understand. That is the answer. And he was literally talking about where we are now. So it took us about 100 years later to understand that it was biology that can take that 78% atmospheric nitrogen out of the air that we're breathing and fix it into the soil, into the plant through biology. So we're getting that nitrogen through biology. Does does it bind with the petroleum that's in, in that? Is that one of the reasons why they use oil? Um, with the Harbor Bosch process, it's just energy intensive. So it's taking natural gas. What it takes to make that and what it's doing on the output is ridiculous. It, it's if you can understand how much energy and how many resources it's taking to make that fertilizer, and then what it's doing with destruction on the output, and then how much we're subsidizing it on top of it, that's the crazy part. 
because I when saw we something about that subsidizing it. Oh but, yeah, a billion a day to conventional agriculture. Yeah. Right. Whoa. Can you imagine that's if a nuts. billion went to regenerative. Like everything. <laughs> could you imagine? It's just propped up with like crutches, yeah. like yeah, the whole thing, and um, that's really why we're really shifting how we're talking about moringa because um, it's it's a companion plant. One of the, actually since the convergence. One of the major questions that I got at the convergence by so many plant people is what grows well with Moringa? It was the 10th time that I got that question through the weekend. I was like, I, I, these people understand plants. I usually don't get that question as much from people that, that don't, that, that don't um, say like already grow. I'm getting this question mostly from people who already grow. And so that's why even these last two weeks, I've kind of even shifted my my own shop, how I talk about it, what I'm really like focusing on as the main product for our collective to really grow and scale. And that's Moringa is nature's, I call it nature's number one companion plant because it has lots of nitrogen. Why, why is Moringa one of the fastest growing uh, trees in the world? And that's because it has lots of zeatin. And I was wondering, how could we recognize this this protein, or how do how do you see proteins in your in your microscope? Um, I don't think we can really see proteins. Proteins, they're not very very small. The Maybe there is, blocks. but yeah, not that I know of. Right. How far in would we have to go? Because you're at you're at say like a four hundred. You're at like a four hundred percent. Would we have to go to like four thousand? we i don't know i don't know that because i feel like we're going into dna at that point at that point that dang, yeah that's because that's more what's, like molecular yes exactly exactly wow. okay so i'm looking at the screen here i'm looking at your microscope did you just put a couple drops of the biostimulant on a on a petri on a glass actually just one drop on a slide one, one drop, drop on a slide yeah okay. and now i'm at a 60x this is 100 times and, and so what I zoomed in on is in the middle, you see that clump? Yeah. That's going to be your moringa right there. And that bright part is going to be the mineral. And when I check mm. with epi right now, so if I turn on epi, that glow, that's your phosphorus. Wow. That's great. That's good to yeah. see. That's unbelievable. And then some drops. Because oh, I'm, I'm taking notes. <laughs> I'm literally like, as, as I'm learning this and I'm going through this, like I'm having to take notes about this too. Uh, thankfully, I do have um, Jacobo as my mentor and we get to talk about it because he developed this. He's um, an industrial engineer that teamed up with a molecular biologist and they created this essentially from their Moringa trees that they're growing in Nicaragua. Okay. So this is a USDA certified organic product that's made on a thousand acre Moringa farm. It's kind of spread out. There's there's like three or 400 acres here. There's like three, 400 acres there, but it's pretty much in the same kind of valley area. And it, it's a lot of owners. It's not just one owner. You know, it's, it's, it's multiple investors in this, in this business. And so that's really what I'm trying to get into is even the business side of it. You know, how do I how do I make sure that this 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 Moringa operation stays stays viable? And also we've been talking about getting it to the US for about two to three years. We're trying to figure out how to get this operation here in the US. Uh, we even went and visited a couple of large, large failing citrus farms in central South Florida. We, we, I drove down to Fort Myers near um, near um, Echo Farm. Mm. And uh, we saw like a 50 acre citrus farm that was failing and the guy was potentially wanting to sell the property or either that or partner with us to make Moringa a viable option uh, to produce biostimulant here in the States. Um, yeah, so, so what you're basically getting with this biostimulant is you're really getting a full deliverance package because you're getting the organic matter from the Moringa, which is holding the minerals. But the real, the real key to this is the biology to deliver it. Because we're working with chemistry, but we're working with biology too. We're working with both of them together and with biophysics 
on top of that, but that's another conversation. But with uh, chemistry and biology together, we're able to deliver these minerals to our plants. And that is the opposite of chemical synthetic fertilizers. Right. And it brings us to a higher level of health for our planet and ourselves as well. Right. So what what is keeping them alive in here, even with the lid on it? So, so the, the sugar same, that you added. The sugar, right. The molasses. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's their, their carbohydrates, their food source. Right. To keep them going. Yeah, because that was have... what a lot of people kept telling me. They're like, oh, that that must be dead because it's got a lid on it. And I'm just like, crap, that that must be true. I'm trying to figure no. it out myself. So this is really beautiful to know. It takes a lot to have no bacteria. Once you start looking under a microscope, you realize we're really just the vessels for all these microorganisms. They're running the show. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I've been putting this down on my raised beds now for about um, two years. They, it started my raised beds. I started them with just, you know, Moringa sticks, like a Hugel, Hugel culture, mm -hmm. where I built it up. Uh, then I covered it with mulch. Then I covered that with soil. Then I covered that with mulch. Then I covered that with soil over two years now. I'm in my second, second layering. And I can tell that the, the, the sticks down below have really broken down because the first year I, I got like a bunch of like really nasty looking fungus that mm. came out like that blobby, that blobby, like nasty, like yellowy pus looking fungus was coming yeah. out of it. And, and and my plants were not doing that well. All the moringa trees that I planted in, in those raised beds, they all died back and everything. Uh, they were really sensitive to all that, that bad fungal action. Yeah. Now this year we just put um, lettuce, lettuce in there about two months or about 60 days in. And I've got huge, huge lettuce leaves, kale. Um, I think it might actually be like a, a larger kale variety. But I mean, in 60 days, we went from seed to like a full, like a full crowning. Uh, I even have a little cauliflower forming already. I've got eggplants already forming. And this is 60 days in. We, we planted them the 1st of November. And um I, I would I'll be applying, I'd be, I'll be applying this biostimulant. Uh, usually, you know, recommended on the label, we say to put it down every two weeks, you know, but even for me, that sometimes is too much. And I at least get it in there once a month. Yeah, you know? that's about right. Yep. Yeah. And so when you got that yellow fungus, you weren't using this yet, right? That's when I kind of was first starting to put it down. I was waiting for it to break down. I wasn't planting any, anything in it yet. And so I, it, it was really like the first year that um, I tried applying it, putting it down. I put some Moringa powder down on it, of course. Didn't really get much success the first year because it was just really breaking down because there was a lot of Moringa sticks in there. So there's a lot of activity even just in the sticks themselves breaking down. Oh, I see a big chunk there. What is that? Yep. So that's a mineral. That's a mineral. And so if we throw this on, let's see. Yeah, there's the phosphorus right there. Wow. Yeah, so that's a big chunk of mineral. And so this, because you have biology in this, right? all the moving little pe the little parts you guys are seeing, that is extracting that mineral and making it available to your plant through the biology. What's the phosphorus specifically uh, do? The phosphorus is good for your flowering stage. Um, and then that's part of the macro, the NPK. So it is a, a, a major nutrient that is more used when you're going into flowering. And so super important. And they all are important in balance yeah. at the right time. Oh, good. Because um, we, 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 what we like to do is, is say that this is really good for, for growth. And once it actually goes to flower, once you have a plant that actually is going to flower, um, it doesn't need as much of this. It's mm -hmm. already gotten everything that it needed to flower. And at that point, it's still absorbing all of that stuff that's happening because the plant goes into a different reaction once it goes to flower. And we were talking about that, about the Moringa specifically too. It's like the plant's growing, 
And then when it goes to flower, it stops growing and it starts putting the energy into flowering, which is kind of like a whole, whole nother thing. But, yes. um, you know, this, this is much more of say like a, a vegetative growth. When someone says, what's the, what's the NPK? And I ask a Kobo, like, is it a seven, seven, seven? Like, what is that? Mm -hmm. you know, you know, based on that, that, that fertilizer kind of thing. And the reason why they can create those numbers is because they're synthetically making, making those they're putting, and that's NPK. When somebody says seven, 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 that's seven parts, nitrogen, seven parts, phosphorus, seven parts, potassium. Um, and, and, and say like a flowering might be much more of a, of a different kind of, of loop. Uh, like a, like a, like a 10, 10, 10, or something like that, where, where it kind of mm -hmm. changes the numbers a little bit and they can do that in the laboratory. And so when I asked, um, Okobo about that in this, he's like, that's, this is not really like that. And so it's I'm more gonna, holistic. Yeah. It's exactly. Yeah. It's much more holistic in that. Yes. Yeah. This is giving me the chills. This is making me feel even, even better because one of, one of my say like, hindrances or maybe say limiting things with me in business is that sometimes I don't even really like business. I don't, I don't <laughs> really like sales. I don't really like having a product, but what I'm doing is I'm opening up over the last couple of years, especially with the Kobo, because I can tell he's really super passionate about this and he talks about it really, really well. And he's really knowledgeable about this. And even just this right here is reassuring to me that this is really, really, really what he is also saying it is. And this is a part of the science that we want to prove and show. So this is this is um, this is a huge testimonial for us. I'm going to be able to take take this take this recording and be able to use it and show people the the holistic nature of this biostimulant and why. um say like just an NPK. So like people are just putting that, that granular down, but, but the soil might be dead. It might not actually have any living action in it. There might not be any, any compost in it with all of this good bacteria. So one yeah, of the when you're, Oh, go ahead. No, you please go. Well, when you're doing that NPK synthetic chemical fertilizers, you're, you're just force feeding your plants like a big goal. Right. Yeah. You're just shove, you're just giving the plant some some nutrients, only the macro. It it will grow. Nitrogen in a plant will grow, but right. that doesn't mean it has medicinal or nutritional value at all. In fact, it's the opposite. Right. It's, it's the biology that's going to get your plants to that level of nutritional density and medicinal compounds, which is why we're growing and eating in the first place. Food be thy medicine. And that's not happening with the chemical fertilizers. Right. So you might see green and big and we think, oh, that's so great. And actually you're eating nitrates, which is exactly really unhealthy. And, so, it's, and it's tasteless. Yeah. This is the thing that I was going to say is that's what I put in the video that I that I, I was working on for two days straight here, trying to really figure this out is, is um, the microbes and the bacteria and the living organisms in there are really helping with the taste in the flavor. Well, they're, they're, they're the ones doing it. They're the ones that are They're not just taste. helping. Like they literally, if when you have your biology, they're the ones that is bringing in those secondary metabolites. And that's what's creating the taste, the smell, the color, and your medicinal properties and your nutrient density. So without this biology that you're seeing right now on the screen, you're not hitting those higher levels of the plant's genetic expression. And that's why now when we're going to the store, our kids don't want to eat vegetables and fruits. You don't blame them because it's tasteless. It has no nutritional value. And that's, everyone knows that. And so it's Jeez. the biology. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I did to help return the taste buds for me was I just, I stopped eating sugar. Mm. Um, that sugar, if, if, if it has sugar on the box and it's just sugar by itself without saying like organic cane sugar, um, I don't eat it. You know, it was just one of the first things in my health journey, realizing what's, what's the most common reason for a disease. 
and it, it, it was, it was sugar. And I was like, I guess when I was a ch child and I, and I started hearing about that, I started having some family members that were passing away from cancers and, and things like that. I was like, well, maybe one of the first things that I can do is, is while I'm young is, is say like cut back on the sodas. And that's what I did first was I stopped drinking sodas when I was a teenager, a young teenager. I just stopped drinking soda. Um, and, um, you know, what's crazy is that actually, um, uh, Coke and Pepsi are used as pesticides in, in developing countries because they have a lot of Pepsi and a lot of Coke. They have more Pepsi and Coke than they do have drinking water, you know, and they're using the pest, they're using Coca-Cola as a pesticide. So they're spraying their plants with, with to kill Coke. things. Yeah. And that's what we're doing to our gut microbiome. When we're oh, drinking it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You said it right there. Wow. Well, it's, it's all the same, you know, how we're treating our soil and how we're treating our bodies is, is, is exactly reflections of each other. Yeah. One of the first things that I do, uh, say like if, if I had to take antibiotics or something, like I just had my wisdom teeth taken out, uh, a couple months ago, um, I I've had, you know, a couple of ear infections over the years, just from putting, you know, my finger in my ear with dirt in it. And I'm just like, oh crap. And then ends up getting infected or something. Uh, one of the things that I'll, I'll eat coming back from that is, uh, is, um, what's, what's the cabbage, the fermented cabbage? Oh, sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. And the other one is kimchi. 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 I like those the most. I like kimchi yeah. the most, but I know a lot of people are like, they like kefir. Um, yeah. What's another probiotic food that kombucha, you like? Kombucha. Kombucha. Um, you know, yogurts to an extent. Yeah. Limited. I um, tried doing the yogurt thing, but for me, it just, it adds too much mucus and I end yeah. up having too much phlegm. Not uh, as many strains as you would get through a kefir or kombucha anything right. like that. Yeah. Now when John Kohler was over here, he, um, he was like, man, the kombucha industry is just a scam. Uh, essentially, cause it's not really even really alive. I'd like to take a look at kombucha from the store to see yeah. what's going on. Cause it's like more sugars it's, and, and they yeah, maybe like some... de alcohol it. Like when, when, yeah. when, when the kombucha comes out, it's at like a six or seven percent alcohol but they end up having to 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 de-alcohol it but that de-alcoholing also strips it a lot of it of it of its nutritional value mm. well maybe the ones you could be buying in the store might have more sugar content because they're adding all those flavors uh, but if you're brewing it at home not adding flavors it's definitely alive and microbial and it's great for our soils bios biostimulants in itself i add it in there's a whole consortium of microorganisms in a bacteria and yeast in the kombucha scoby. In the scoby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeast, yeast is a yeast is a big one. I um, mean, you just should brew your own because it's so cheap. Um, I, need to, I have I have a scoby right here. Yeah, I need just to go ahead. Black tea and sugar and brew it yourself, and you don't have to add extra flavorings and sugar and stuff yeah so it's 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 being fed already it's already in its own little self-contained yeah. package um but it's been in here i've probably had this for maybe about a year or so and i need to go ahead and and just get it i, I went ahead and bought some sugar i don't and black tea sugar. that's it it's super simple black tea i was going to use moringa tea actually uh with um yerba mate oh that would work right yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make like a really, really dark, dark Moringa tea. I'll add lots of Yerba Mate because it has some of that caffeine in it too. Yeah. Um, to help act as a food. So, so this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Just seeing this. I'm really happy that you jumped on here, proving to us and everybody that this is really what it says it is. I've got a couple other questions here too. Um, Emily is asking, how do we use the liquid Moringa? So, I have the instructions um, on on the checkout page at growmoringa.com. You can get to the shop. Uh, growmoringa.shop is actually the actual shop too. And um, in the description there, it has some instruction of how to use. So what I'm trying to do first is condition the soil. 
I want to condition the soil. I want to strengthen the, the structure of the soil um, with the powder. So first I'm putting down a little bit of powder. Um, I'm putting that in the soil, mixing that in the soil. I'm even taking some soil, I'm mixing the powder into that soil, and then I'm putting that on my plants versus just kind of like spraying a little bit of powder because the wind, wind will take it. So what I like to do is I like to put this powder in a big, big tub, mix that in with some soil, and then I put that on my plants. So that'll be step one is, is this. This is why this comes together uh, in the bio box, which is really going to be our main, main product that we really want to sell and scale the company. We got to get a backbone. We've got to get something that this company uh, is known for. The, the powder industry is good. It just fluctuates so much between seasons and what's good and, 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 and things, but we want to be able to have much more consistency with our, with our pro product. And also getting into the soil thing is opening our company up to, to a garlic farmers, tomato farmers, onion farmers, corn farmers, and all the gambit of farmers versus saying just selling to somebody who might want to take some Moringa. Yeah, that's millions of people, but we can open up our market to tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people, um, educating people how to increase their soil biology. Step one, putting this USDA certified organic Moringa powder it's a whole tree powder. It's the whole tree. So we've, we've been grinding and drying up sticks and stems. It's going through a process that allows us to certify it organically with the USDA. And then step two is to take this. And that's why we have it in this bottle here is to dilute it. This is a one to 32. So you take one ounce to 32 ounces of water. So that's about four ounces to every gallon. And so this bottle is a 16 ounce bottle and this makes four gallons. So what you would do is essentially, if you were to take this whole bottle and dump it out, it would fill up a four gallon or five gallon uh, bucket, right? And so you're diluting it slightly. Now, if you wanted to feed feed the microorganisms that are in it. You could put a bubbler in your in your five gallon bucket. You could add a little bit of molasses, a little bit of sugar. You could give them some extra food and really pump them. And then you could apply that to your soil as a living, a living uh, biostimulant uh, application. Or you can just take your take your uh, regular garden you know, water, you don't have to have a spray or anything like that. And just put a couple of ounces in your one gallon um, watering hose, you know, your little watering bucket. And um, you want to put it on the leaves. You want to put it on the soil. The spray works really well because you can lift the leaves up and you can spray the leaves with it. And when you're applying that to the leaves, it also is kind of like a coat. And also with the beneficial bacteria and microorganisms, it's feeding the leaves right on the leaf. So, you know, you and I, we, we only have one mouth, <laughs> you know, and we only eat through here. I mean, yeah, we absorb, you know, a little bit through our skin, you know, we can get sun through our skin, you know, things like that. But plants, their mouths are their entire body, <laughs> you know, they're living and eating, um, on the leaves and on the stems and everything. So when you're applying it and, and, and hitting, hitting the stems of all your plants, you're not just giving it that basic NPK, you're giving it the microbes, which helps with taste. And you're also giving it those other non-food ingredients too that, that I haven't really talked about much, which is the hydrogen and the CO2 and a few other, few other things. Um, I really like, I want to learn more about the other things, like you said, like the selenium. selenium. Yeah, the micronutrients. The micronutrients, even kind of like, like copper, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. Copper, um, what, silver? Uh, no, I no. had it up. No, oh, no, no. Is. We do have a heavy metals test, which is important too for our growers who want to produce a really high quality green that doesn't have heavy metals in it. Because one of the things is that Moringa 
is so strong that it pulls everything from the soil. So if it's present in the soil, it tends to end up putting that in the leaves. So one of the one of the biggest, say, concerns for the industry is that it, it pulls up heavy metals. And so what a lot of farmers are doing right now is they're actually, they're taking their conventional farm, say like a conventional tomato farm. They, they, they might end up leveling that farm and then the next year they're planting moringas in it. But they've been planting moringas in that in that field, or they've been planting tomatoes in that field using conventional synthetic fertilizers that have heavy metals in them. And then moringa is pulling that up. And so what's happening right now in the moringa industry is that there's a lot of recalls uh, with large companies that are buying moringa from countries around the world without doing the proper due diligence. Mm they're finding that they're having to to recall the moringa that they bought by the container ship because it has heavy metals in it or it's contaminated with heavy metals and wow. that's mostly because there's an interest in the moringa industry because it's it's shooting up by the billions every year like, like there's more and more demand for moringa i think it it <laughs> it started you know at about 5 billion dollars a year you know in the early 2000s to now uh, being at 10, close to 15, and then reaching 20 billion, uh, I think by 2030. You know, so by 2030, it'll be over a $20 billion a year industry. And these are just numbers from what people can track, you know, what, what's being shipped, but that doesn't even include all the sales that's happening from people that's growing Moringa in their backyard, you know? So we just want to make sure that if you're growing it for yourself and especially for others, you're also doing like a like a soil test, and we have that soil test kit on our website as well. Um, Very cool. Yeah, and the test that we have tests um, eight eight things. I can actually get the test right here. Well, so we have it here. Um, it does arsenic, barium, cadmium, chromium. Um, I don't know if some of some of these. It's yeah, P B H G S E selenium. Is that selenium? And then A G. Those are the short short elemental forms. It has it on here. So everything is in this kit. So how, how do you test for heavy metals on your property? Essentially, it's got a little bag inside of it and you would just go to kind of like the four corners of the property. And then you would put the uh, the soil in this in this bag and then you would and then you would send it back to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever um, been involved with testing soils or looking for heavy metals? No, I haven't. Um, very important though, if you're getting on a new site or if you're going to buy a home and you're thinking of growing or yep. you're about to start a farm, that's essential Right. to know that's, what you're working with. Right. That's one of the things that I ask when people are like, Hey, I want to grow Moringa in my backyard and I want to start my own business. I ask them, I say, how, how old is your home? Like when was your house built? Uh, because they bring in a lot of landfill. You know, and that landfill could be contaminated with heavy metals. Yep. And it takes a couple years. That's one of the reasons why it takes three years to get USDA certified organic. Um, it's because of that is because it takes about three years for the wash and for it to, to get, uh, you know, further down into, into the ground uh, to wash off or to just dissipate with the environment. I think that's for pesticides and glyphosate as well. Yes. It's about three years. Yeah. Um, I talked to my dad. My dad is a golf pro. And so he's he's uh, spent his entire life on the golf course. And what's what's funny is that he's had some of the top, top positions in the whole country 
as far as golf is concerned. I mean, he was the head pro at PGA national in the nineties, Oh wow! in the late nineties. Um, when I was growing up, he, um, was at PGA national was the head pro and was the head pro of all those four courses there that are in, um, uh, Port, Port St. Lucie, Port St. Lucie. Yeah. Just not too far from where you are on the East coast. And, um, now he is, is working the grounds, um, for the city, you know, and he does golf courses and other, other, um, other city parks and things like that. But he's, he's really into, into the soil and he's really into the grass. And it's just like, how funny uh, of that line, you know, passing down. Cause his dad, my grandfather was a park ranger ah. for, and he retired as a park ranger uh, for the state of Michigan. And so he was a forester and, and, and I, and I have some of my grandfather's books and he's just, he loved trees. And so I know that's in my DNA, you know, <laughs> so it passed down where he was obsessed with trees and he's got notebooks and notebooks of like drawing the different types of leaves and, and seeds and, and sticks and stems. He's got drawings from all of his, his college notebooks and stuff. I, I, I have them and uh, from my granddad. And then just seeing that my dad ended up becoming a farmer, but a grass farmer because golf golfers, they have to have pristine, perfect grass. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I asked him, I said, what can I use to help um, mitigate my weeds? You know, what can I use as a natural kind of like herbicide, right? Mm -hmm. And um, he said that there's this natural herbicide, I forget the exact name of it, but essentially it's, it's an acid it's kind of like a, like a strong vinegar. And he was like, honestly, the best thing for weeds is just use vinegar. Mm. You know, just simply, you might have to reapply it, but if, if you get two to three times, if you apply it by the, the second or third time, they usually don't end up coming back in that same spot. So, um, just wanting to, to do things organically. We're trying to actually get this. I asked him, I said, how can I get a golf course to buy this? Mm. And, and he said, you want to go to the supplier of that golf course. There's a couple of big companies that um, distribute and sell to, to golf courses. I mean, there's more golf courses in Florida than any other state. Yeah. And so, getting them off all that, the chemicals would be a wow. really amazing thing to take on. It, that's kind of like one of my first things that I want to take on is, is, is golf courses and, and they're not willing to sacrifice the, the the performance you know of some of these things because they've got some real real persistent pests and bugs there so <laughs> um you know they're just using really really strong stuff but the healthier it is the more alive it is the less they'll have to use some of that stuff they're end up just yes. having to use more and more and more yeah. uh, and with the runoff tiny. yeah and the runoff they're causing and all that i mean they would have, you would think they would want to be on board with that. At right. Some point. So you got to figure out how to talk to them. So I, I have to kind of go through the, the kind of like, um, not the superintendent, like the guy in the back, not the guy in the head, head pro shop. Like he's just selling golf clubs and, and golf balls, but the guy in the back who is, who's in, in charge of the guys cutting the grass and trimming the grass and cutting, mm -hmm. the, cutting the fields. Um, He's back there ordering, he's back there ordering the stuff that he needs, but he essentially has a catalog from another company and I need to get in on that company. I need to, I need to get them. And so one of the things that this, this here is going to prove while you're scrolling through and showing us the minerals, the phosphorus. Um, so can, can you see potassium or can you see nitrogen? No, it's just no. the phosphorus. Oh, and when you're using epifluorescence that you can see. Okay. So we look at that in the roots of the plants. I mean, I see a but, lot of movement. There's a lot of, so movement. that, yeah. So that's your, that's your life. That's your biology. So we're looking at all different types of um, bacteria 
And you see those long strands? Yeah. Those are the bacilli, bacillus. And they'll have like one or two chained bacillus, which is really great. We want, we want that. We want right. that in our own system as well, in our own gut microbiome. Bacillus. And then you're going to see the little, everything moving is biology and life. And that's what we're missing, right? In our ecosystem. That's what we took away with the green revolution and doing synthetic chemical fertilizers. That's right. And so it's not to say we don't want chemistry because we still want chemistry. We still want to understand and utilize chemistry, but we want to use it with biology to take us to that higher level that we neglected in the last 80, 90 years. That's caused a lot of damage in a very, very short period of time to mm -hmm. our earth's health and to our health in a very short amount of time. Wow. And just, yeah, 80 years, like you're saying. Yeah. Yep. And again, that was all developed uh, for ammunition for war. Well, that, that just reassures me. That that's what I'm saying about business and, and doing something good. I, I've always been trying to find something that I really have a backing, that I love, that I'm passionate about. I just really haven't found it. And I think this just reassures me even more. I'm doubling down on, on this biostimulant. I've got to figure out how to make it myself. Um, that's that's proprietary. Well, I can teach that. <laughs> What's that? I can teach you that. Well, good, because yeah. specifically this particular biostimulant has gone through about 10 years of trial before it was even available the way that it is now. Wow. Okay. Um, Hokobo and his partner started to develop this in about 2000, 2001, 2002. <clears throat> By 2008, 2010, they had a, they had a product. By 2012, it was going through trials. By 2015, they started producing this in the tons and tons mm -hmm. uh, because they said that they went through a lot of burning. They burnt a lot of plants. Um, oh, how strong it was? Yeah, they, they had Got to it. find the right concentration for this because they had to get this down to a, a, di a, a concentrate to be able to I follow see. Um, and you know what I noticed? I noticed um, that when I added water to it, it smells really funky. Like it goes ah. bad. It goes bad. You mean after time? Yeah. Not right away. Exactly. So it's like when you add the water to it, it's really kind of like boosting it and making it really, really boost. But you just can't have it sit. Sit. Yeah. Now it's going water. anaerobic. Because you would have to add a little bit of sugar. And then also like an airlock would not be a bad idea. Right. Because of the water. So what is this liquid that's that's suspending it in liquid? It's not necessarily water. Well, but I think it has to be. It has to be somewhat water. But it's weird because it's like it's to a, a certain extent to where it doesn't cause this to happen. I think it's because of the sugar ratio. The sugar ratio. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. A big part of it is the molasses and the sugar ratio. Because those microbes have food. So it's staying there. That consortium of microbes are staying at a certain level. And then when we take away that food source, a different type of microbe will come in to take that place. And so then if we're going where it doesn't smell as good, we might be going into a more anaerobic, non-beneficial, not all the time. That's not a generalization. And so I think it's that ratio. If you add that water and add it a little sugar source, you can keep alive that consortium of microorganisms that we want. I, you could experiment with that. Right, so, right. Yeah. yeah. That, right, okay. You have okay, the good. smell develops over time after you add some molasses or something like that. Right. Um, and that's really what took them the longest to figure out um, the, the, the concentrate, you know, how long and what temperature ah, can, they, okay. can they cook it essentially to get it down to a concentrate where they've ev evaporated as much water as possible to then re to institute the um to institute the sugars you know okay so in a way we could be talking about how long it took them to get to a level to scale to market 
Yes. Versus if we were to make our own at home and use it, we oh, wouldn't yeah. have to worry about those things. No, no. So yeah. we get that question a lot, you know, is how can I make this at home? And you can take the fresh leaves, stick it in a, in a 55 gallon barrel or in a five gallon bucket and have a bubbler, have a bubbler on it, you know, and do that. We, we do that for about 72 hours or so. And we put some molasses in there. And uh, we put a little bit of soil in there. So like I'll take a sock and mm. I'll, I'll wind it up and I'll put yeah. that in there. And that helps to really introduce a lot of the microorganisms. But then what's really special about the Moringa is that um, it has more zeatin than any other plant. Yes. Zeatin yeah. is that protein. So one, a lot of people ask, uh, why don't they see Moringa on the shelf as much, like fresh? Like when you go to a store, why don't you see it fresh? Um, and that's because it's so high in protein that as soon as you pick it off of the tree, it ends up breaking down super fast. So the proteins are breaking down, aging and breaking down so fast that the, that the, that the leaves are wilted and they're, they're not even really pleasant to, to eat or look at, especially to sell when they're at a market, they, they're not, it's not like a iceberg lettuce, you know, it's not mm. like, like an other, other kinds of lettuce or light, lighter color lettuces. You know, this is a really dark, um, protein rich plant that as soon as you pick it, it starts breaking down, you know, once mm. it's not connected to the root system, um, it starts breaking down really fast. So that's one of the main reasons why we don't see, um, Fresh. It, you know, you see it on the on the shelf as far as like at the grocery store. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention when um, people are applying this, it's best to do it at small levels and have more of a consistency. Yeah. And, and so don't think of this as like a, a one time or once in a while and pour too much. You really want to do light feeding and you want to be consistent on that because you're adding that biology consistently to it because this biology dies fast right they don't have a very long lifespan right so we want to be like yeah. spoon feeding it consistent when you're applying it yeah that's the exact opposite of human nature human nature yes. is uh i had a guy that was really sick and he came into the market and he was like i, I really need moringa um and he's never taken it before but then the next time he came in He's like, oh, that's not for me. That's not for me. And I'm like, what he happened? He's like, well, I, I took the whole pack. <laughs> you know, like, he took a, like he just, yep. you, know, like, you know, it's just human nature to just like, you know, take it all, you know, load it up. Like I'll take the whole bottle. And be done with it. And and, and, and think it's going to work and think it's going to yep. fix. But that's actually what Akobo says a lot is it's not about how much you use it's about the consistency. That's why he says to me all the time, he's like every 14 days, every 14 yes. days. Because uh, we're working with it. the biome at this point. We're, we're, we're working holistically with the biomes. So this is a totally different paradigm than what we've been into, right? With, with pharmaceuticals and chemical fertilizers of, you know, applications and quick and it being done. And we're really, we're really regenerating all these biomes in our world and in ourselves. So it's yeah. a whole different paradigm. Beautiful. Well, that's what we're really want to talk about is regenerative everything, you know, finance. I got to figure out what that is with our friends. Um, um, Laura, Laura Oldani, she's really big on the, on the regenerative finance and then also like one of the topics that my, my business partner talks a lot about is, is capitalism. Um, and then how to make capitalism more regenerative. So he's mm -hmm. even kind of regenerative finance capital. Like what, what is that? What does that mean? It's like self feeding. Like, well, I, I'm still trying to figure out like, um, because then it's going into crypto, you know, where it, a lot yeah. of the conversation is, is, is DeFi, which is, decentralized finance is that more regenerative because it's decentralized and it's not much of like an all-seeing eye mm -hmm. it's much more of like a like you know spread across the board kind of like what we're looking at right here where everything here has like its own functions and things it's like working each one together of those little things is like its own world yep 
like a whole galaxy inside there. Yeah. Um, well, we're definitely in the time to be rebuilding our systems and evaluating our systems. And, you know, now that we've seen what we don't want, it's easier to see what we, what we do want. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm excited to learn more about this conversation. I'm really glad that we had a chance to hop on here and, and really show, show me the soil. This is beautiful. I'm trying to figure out how to make this, this conversation kind of like the main, the main conversation for the company. Um, now I'm also at the same time trying to figure out when someone calls me and they want Moringa powder, you know, how do I get them Moringa powder? Cause I, I might only have, you know, what I have here and I may not always have it ready or done or available to ship. I'm trying to think how do I, how do, how, as I grow in my company, I may be having to travel to Africa and India and China and, and many other countries as a CEO, as a, as a, as a representative of the collective as a whole, you know, but if I was to leave right here, right now, the orders would not be able to get fulfilled. You know, mm. nobody would be able to come into the shop, you know, so how do I, how do I also grow and expand this company where we all are standing on our own, on our own feet and our own legs? <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure that out because I run out of Moringa so fast. Cause like when I have it in stock and I have, and I have powder or I have loose leaf, I get so many orders. As soon as I say, Hey, I've got some, I run out really quickly, but how do I keep the company going and also make it super simple for customers because the customer really just wants to click. They just, they, they don't want to have to call multiple people or, or figure it out. You know, they just want to have the click and it, and it shipped very easily. You know, the Amazon, the Amazon thing. Yeah. But a lot of my customers are really, you know, they buy from me because they, they they know me, they, they like me, they trust me. Um, and, it, and the quality it, it may not be fast. That's one of the things is, is that people are frustrated with me in, 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 in ordering is because I, I end up, it takes a little bit longer, you know, a week, sometimes two weeks to get them their order. Mm. Um, and that's just because I'm, I'm the actual farmer. I'm the maker. I don't, I don't just have it sitting on the shelves. It's yeah, a hard yours, time to, it doesn't you know, have just, heavy metals either. Yeah. No heavy metals. <laughs> like you, you're actually caring and looking at what you're doing every aspect of it yeah so that that should be something to wait for besides buying something and now you're consuming heavy metals messing up your health and you think you're doing something good yes and also eating the sticks and the stems when you're not supposed to be eating the sticks and the stems because mm. that's what's happening with the industry is that moringa was actually for plant food and for animal food, and then it's kind of like a byproduct. They're like, oh, well, maybe we can feed people with this too. So you're at that quality now that we that we think we're getting, and it takes time right now. And it's just that extra time. So yeah. there's that saying where it's like, you can have it fast. Yeah. And you can cheap. have it have it good, good or but it's cheap. not going to be cheap. Yeah. Well, for me, it's it's or it's not going to be good. Or, or for me, it's, it's going to be really good, really high quality. And it's going to be a really good price, but it's not going to be fast. Yeah. <laughs> but we know who, what and who we're supporting when we order from you yeah. as well, which oh, is yeah. a really big deal right it's now. Huge. Yeah. I, I do have a lot of recurring customers um, I'm very communicative in the email and the chats. I'm, I'm always vigilant. I'm getting back to people. Even last night, I was getting back to people at 12, one o'clock in the morning as I'm finishing yeah. up my, my ad, ad. I was posting my ad last night that I finished. We're really going to start coming out with a whole series of educational advertisements based on this, this, this bio box and the bio stimulant. Very um, cool. Because I, it's going to be, oh, so, so getting into orders. So, okay. So like somebody here listening is like, Hey, I, I want to start my Moringa business. I want to, I want to sell Moringa. And also Kendrick, will you buy my Moringa? Uh, you know, if I join the collective, do I automatically have sales? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and it's like, 
how do how do I how do I get your moringa? I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm interested in in having a huge warehouse of everybody's moringa because the quality degrades, the time, mm -hmm. you know, the shipping from here and then sh and then packaging and shipping it to the thing. I'm really trying to to focus on on the least amount of of movements and steps for our customers and so at the same time that I'm trying to create you know hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in revenue I'm also trying to create a marketplace where people can come and buy directly from from other growers so that's where I have the moringa map and that's where I have the membership because inside the members area what's happening is that members are coming in and some are buyers, some are growers, some of the buyers, they don't have Moringa, but they're talking to the growers like Jack and other people like um, I'm tr like Jack is in Arizona and he's got some supply and he's able to ship out some of his items. He's getting some of the orders from the members. They, they're starting to get to know him as having a supply. He's also just working through seasons, you know, because it gets pretty cold in Arizona too. So it's like, it's hot when it's hot. But when it's not, you you know, you have to do something else, you know, have to grow something else in the wintertime or have to focus on something else. And then when it gets warmed up again, we can all like swarm and get back to Moringa. But, you know, we still have a lot of what's crazy is that the orders come in mostly in the wintertime. But that's when the trees are dormant. And that's when mm. the trees are slowed down. That's when the trees are not producing. And this has been consistent for me over the past seven years. It's like mm -hmm. the best time to sell Moringa is holiday season. But I run out like I run out before the end of the before the end of the year. And then I have to go January, February, March, April, May, five months, sometimes six months without a supply of Moringa. How, how does somebody do that as a business? Wow. And so Great. that's. That's where we do other things and try to teach people that in the winter time, you know, like right now I had to take powder off the website. I had to take loose leaf mm. off the website. Um, but you can do other things like I, I make capsules out of seeds. So we have a lot of seed capsules available. Uh, I had to take green capsules off the website because I don't have green powder you know, in, in the supply that it takes to fill as many capsule orders as I'm getting in. Um, but one of the things that people can do is focus on is, is the oil, you know, focusing in on, on supplying people with, with medicinal grade or therapeutic grade oil, where it's very good as a topical. Uh, it's very, I cook with it. You know, I, I use it mostly as my cooking oil. It's really expensive that way, but because I'm making gallons and gallons and gallons of it, I have it. Might as well use it. Um, seeds, seeds is a big one all year. Definitely for your company, you know, focusing on seeds. I'm really just trying to train people how to get their 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 businesses running throughout the whole year. Um, I mean, you really are rebuilding the systems and working it out. I've, you know, been watching you now and following this with you for a few years now, your work with a cooperative framework, and now you're exploring supply chain issues, yep. creating supply change. I mean, it's, you know, and none of this has been done yet. So you're working through it with the community. And um, yeah, that you literally are rebuilding the systems on all these levels of how yeah, yeah. we're accessing this. Yeah, behind the scenes, um, I'm teaching teaching the members how to place advertisements. Like even even Jack here was saying he wants to help sell some of the products that we have when he runs out and still make a little bit of cash from those commissions. How does he do that? And so there was a couple of options there that we were exploring where. It, you know, because I have the book on Amazon, he could be an Amazon affiliate, get the Amazon affiliate link, link it to that product on there. And then anytime someone purchased, you know, the book through that Amazon link, he would get a small commission. I think with them, it's only like 4%. Mm. I think Amazon commissions are only 4% versus 
if you go to my website and you become an affiliate to my website, I'm offering 10%. And so I, I told him just here earlier in this, in this episode here that he could take his affiliate link and his affiliate coupon with the shop, with the Moringa shop, and he could make that his main kind of like a uh, link tree, you know, cause I'm trying to teach people how to become affiliates. Like we have this master marketer affiliate guy. Um, that's one of our affiliates. He's got hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. And when he made a video and he said, Hey, look, look, everybody, this is where I get my seeds. <clears throat> he went like this on the video. He was like, this is where I get my seeds shop at the link in the bio. <laughs> he ended up getting $10,000 worth of orders that came in to our website. $10,000 came in that wow. month just from his one video saying, hey, get your seeds from here. And all he did was make a one minute video. But because he's he's an influencer, he's a creator, he's talking about homesteading, he's talking about off grid, he's talking about all these things. He was able to generate income from me. I gave him 10% of that. You know, I gave him 10% of those sales. Boom, thousand bucks. And that was a thousand bucks that he made off of one video. So you just without need having writer. to ship it, without having to buy it in, without having to have the supply himself. And the next day he could talk about something else. The next day after that, he could talk about something else. He's able to essentially talk about any of the things that he loves and that he does by being that kind of, say, internet marketer, sale, sales. You know, it's just a lot of people are having that, that, you know, that, you know, getting on the camera and, you know, and, and being salesy and things like that. But um, it's a skill. It's a skill that I want to teach. That I that I that I want others to learn and others to know, um, because it's essentially it's helped me uh, get out of poverty. And I've been able to take care of myself. I've been able to work for myself because of this skill that I'm learning and acquiring. Um, it's really psychology, you know. You're really, you're just really feeding in on what people's wants and needs are, and I think. I really found something like I, I latched on to Moringa quick. Like, and I, and, and I made it my main thing and I didn't, I didn't really mess with any other plants. I wanted to make it everything. I'm still learning about it every single day. Now through this, this soil biology conversation that we're having, um, I want to learn more about zeatin. Um, it's not necessarily caffeine. It's not like a, like a stimulant in that way, but it's a hormone. And, and, and the building blocks of zeatin are amino acids. And so what that just tells me is that the reason why Moringa grows so fast is because it has a lot of this, this hormone, this fast acting, this fast growing hormone. It's a highly reproductive, reproductive tree. So it's doing that with the microorganisms. It's doing that with the soil. It's helping to produce more. And so that's why we say uh, with this biostimulant, it helps to produce up to 40% more yields. So you can get bigger fruits, bigger vegetables, more bananas on the rack, you know, more peppers on the plant, more opportunities for flowering. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> like you were saying there, because of the... um. The phosphorus, the phosphorus helps with flowering. The flowering, if you've got more flowers, then you've got more fruit. And so you've got that active, uh, you know, what do they call that? Um, where it's um, it's gassing, the phosphorus is giving off like through the color, right? You're you Because what we see through the spectrum is kind of like what's not there, right? Because isn't white like almost everything, like all the colors is white and then like black is like none of the colors. So like if we're seeing green, then we're not actually seeing green. We're seeing the lack of that. It's weird. And so like with your with your green color, um, 
when we see the white that's coming off the phosphorus, is it, is it like gassing? Is it like, is it, is it breathing like phosphorus? I don't, I can't answer that one right. yet. <laughs> that's interesting. I wonder exactly what phosphorus is. It's an element. It's, 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 it's not a, it's a rock. It's a rock. Right. Yeah. Let's look at it now. Um, cause I, I, when I first started to understand the difference between like what plants do, what, what are plants really doing when we eat plants, we're eating calcium, we're eating phosphorus, we're eating potassium, we're eating copper, we're eating these things that we think are like a solid, right? that are like solid, like a rock or, or even a metal. But what plants do is they assimilate those metals and they assimilate those rocks and they turn it into a liquid form, a form that we can absorb. But what's crazy is that like when you look at a Snickers bar and you look at the, you look at the percentage of all of these like minerals that are in it, I heard that a lot of that is actually the rock form and not the liquid form that we can absorb. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, it might be in the food, but they're literally mining it and putting it as a powder, like a rock form and not necessarily kind of like what the plant is giving us. And They're so not bioavailable. Think, it's not bioavailable. Yeah. It's in a rock form. I think that's called kind of like a phosphate. It's mm. kind of like the term for like a rock form. It's one of the reasons why fertilizer companies here in Florida are so prevalent is because there's lots of phosphates at the surface. Florida is a is a is a shelf. And um it, it potentially was a uh, like a shallow seabed for a, for a long time. And so all the fertilizer companies are here in Florida because they have everything that they need. The phosphates are at the surface mm. and they can mine it without having to dig these huge holes. They can literally just like scour the, the, the surface of, of the ground and accumulate enough of the phosphates that they need to make these fertilizers, um, which in turn causes those big, huge pools of water, like poisonous water, toxic water. The um, dead zones. Those dead zones. Yeah. Or, or like, like when you look on the map and you look, you're looking at these big pools of water, like they're square, they're square, they're man-made, they're clearly made. Oh, they're you're square. talking about where they're making it at. Where they're making, where they're yes. making the, the fertilizers, right? Where there was like a leak a couple years ago. Off of one. This is what I'm saying. There yeah. conveniently was a leak because Over they're there already near you. all at capacity. They're all full. And they have to sit there forever. It's it's literally like 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 a nuclear waste because the process of stripping the the phosphates to get the actual synthetic fertilizers is such a toxic process that they end up generating wastewater. Well, what's crazy is that every few years, there's a, a break or yeah. a levy or a leak or, or sometimes they allow the dumping. Yeah, They allow it. Like every few years when they get somebody in office, all of a sudden now it's cool to dump it. Because they say lowered the lowered the uh, the regulation, you know the EPA they'll get somebody in that they have in their pocket that allows them to dump so to make more room so that they they can keep they can keep making this toxic water. But what happens every time that they dump it? It goes into the water waterways, and we wonder why we get red tide, especially yeah. here in Florida, especially here on the West Coast especially here in Tampa, which yep. is really sad because it's yeah. like, I, I, I moved here because I, I love, 
I, I love the trees. I love the bay. But to hear that the bay is dead, there's Toxic. no oysters in the bay. Like what? There's no oysters? There's no oysters in the bay. Why not? That's like the thing that keeps the, the, the it alive. Yeah. Well, they were they were over they were overfished or over you know they over um, uh, harvested the oysters uh, faster than they could reproduce. But then once they were pretty much over over harvested, you know that's when in the fifties Tampa really started experiencing severe red tide, and that's because we have a lot of power plants. Um, not only here that, that, that throw off wastewater, um, well, we have the highest concentration of fertilizer companies in the Tampa Bay area. It's wild. Yeah. And all, and it, using biology will extract that phosphorus. So having these, these places create all this synthetic fertilizer, we, we don't need it. That's the thing. We don't even need all this. Stop red tide. Stop red tide. That's kind of a, a slogan that we kind of came up with last summer. We were at the beach and we're really just trying to figure this whole thing out because we've got Jacobo and uh, partnered with us and we're trying to partner in with their farm in Nicaragua. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, as as the guy that, you know, the hippie guy that I am, that's like, I'm not, I'm not buying stuff. I'm not. You know, I don't want to contribute to 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 you know to the these toxic things. Um, trying to figure out my my way in the world. You know, how do I contribute positively without you know just selling like plastic or selling toxins? And this this makes me feel really good, and I'm really 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 happy that you did this for us. Um, this yeah, is great. down in history. This is my, this is epic. This is historical testimonial in the making right here. I was just on the phone with Okobo last night. He's like, we need to get more testimonials. And I'm like, um, you know, trying to assimilate the 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 testimonials that he gets from big farms mm -hmm. down to the the level of understanding that like say everybody would understand. Cause like he'll send me paperwork of like papers and papers and papers of like the percentages of like he's dealing with farmers that are really really scientific they're engineers you know they're really into the numbers 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 so he's got a lot of it but how do we take that to assimilate that to somebody who who wants to to know you know that 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 is kind of like in layman's terms you know and so that's what i'm trying to be i'm trying to be that for him you know being really big in the industry where he's supplying container ships mm -hmm of this to farms around the well, world. Well, this is this is mimicking nature. And we're at a point where we can't really afford not to mimic nature anymore. And even people that maybe not are so on board with this is even admitting like, yeah, we can't keep doing the things we were. So I'm super passionate about getting people to understand where chemical synthetic fertilizers came from why we're using them, what they're doing. And we have access and now the knowledge and everything we need to be doing these biological fertilizers, whether it's something like this that you can see and verify and purchase and support a, a company and a co-op moving forward on this, or if it's something you want to make on your own at home, right. either yeah. way, yeah. like th this is absolutely everyone should pretty much understand now this is where we're going to have to be going is mimicking nature with life with biology in this holistic perspective and um yeah i mean it, 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 we just run the line of what we've done to the planet and our health with this chemical synthetic treatments which is it's really just about money it's really about corporations the pharmaceuticals pesticides you know our health care it all comes down to there. So if you want to take a stance against anything, it's right. It's right here. It's right biological here. life. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's great. That's great to hear that because that makes me even more supportive of this. Because <clears throat> it all starts with the soil, like everything.
And it all goes back into the soil. And the soil is literally the keystone to everything in our planet and our health. And so when you understand and start with the soil and the biology and how it all works, that's where we get, that's where we're led again, back down to this biofertilizer with life and understanding oh, how nature works. You just, yeah, you just re reminded me. Okay. Cause I was on the line with Hakobo. And for, for a while there, we wanted to kind of steer away from the term fertilizer, but as I'm getting more and more in this industry, like people know what fertilizer is, but do you know the difference, you know, technical or even legality, like legal terms, like the difference between a fertilizer and a soil amendment? Well, I don't know the legal, but from what I understand with soil, a fertilizer is going to be feeding your soil with nutrients. So we're the micro and macro nutrients. Um, and then we have like a biostimulant. And when you're saying stimulant, you're actually stimulate, stimulating the plant in some way to have a reaction, which is can be a, a good thing. So you're, you're giving it uh, a certain input to trigger it. And then an amendment or a conditioner is, to me, is kind of just affecting the whole system. Right. Almost that's what, like that's biochar what would do. Yeah. So you're, you're kind of affecting biophysics of the holistic system at that point. You're not necessarily feeding it minerals and nutrients, um, more so as you're working with that soil structure so that the biophysics structure. of the whole system works efficiently. I yeah. guess that's my explanation. I don't I don't think that's illegal. Yeah, yeah. No, that was good. I, I kind of I, I say that fertilizer feeds the plant and the soil amendment feeds the soil. Because like what you were saying is that when you put fertilizer down, it kind of like bypasses everything and it just force feeds the plant. Synthetic. Synthetic now, when you're putting fertilizer. natural fertilizer in, you're feeding the microbes. Okay, because that is what Okobo said too. He's like, don't just say fertilizer, but saying natural fertilizer over, because when you just say regular fertilizer, it automatically kind of goes to synthetic. It's like you just when you go to shop, shop a fruit and you don't see organic on it, you know that it's got chemicals. It's it's so backwards. It's yeah. so backwards. It's so nuts. You can just say biofertilizer. Living. Oh, bio. I love that. Just yeah. say biofertilizer. Fertilizer. Oh, and it would wow. be a fertilizer because you have the nutrients in it that's feeding the microorganisms. So this isn't wow. bypassing nature and force feeding it synthetic fertilizer straight into the plant to it, for it to uptake you're feeding the biology which then converts it into the plant which is nature that's right nature. yeah oh i love that i love and the so bio fertilizer biochar bio would be like an, a more of an amendment because it's not directly giving your your system nutrients but it's creating so many um so many benefits to the whole system of buffering, the water capacity, buffering, yeah, buffering, detox potential. Like, there's so much that is happening that you really couldn't say biochar is a fertilizer. That would that's right not now. When when you take when you take a handful of soil and and you squeeze it and it sticks together, uh that structuring what's causing it what's the what's the name of of that is that i I've, I've been saying humus but it's really loam well the humus is more of what i what i consider it is more of what the microorganisms and fungi are creating in the soil blues that create the aggregate of the soil so we have all this biology that is processing everything in the soil and it's creating these glues that then make the soil particles come together in an aggregate. And then when all those beautiful aggregates come together, that's giving you loamy soil. So loamy is like a description of a really beautiful structure of soil. And we want that 
structure because that's what's helping again with biophysics of everything happening, of everything right. being able to work holistically together. You want this really great um, structure for everything to be flowing and working. And that, that's what they call loading. Okay, good. I'm glad that you clarified that because, um, and you were kind of cutting in and out a little bit. I didn't really hear hear all of it. But, oh, okay. Um, but um, like, like, like if I have like a soil that just falls apart, one of the things that I'll add to it is coconut coir. Would so, that be considered well, a the structure, or the like structure a in the soil, the real structure that we're looking for, that real loneliness is coming through the biology. It's coming through the biology. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you can add things like cocoa coir and different things to give it more water holding capacity. Yeah. It, yeah. And all, and that's all great. And that, you know, we want that to start with. But ultimately, we want our system to be living soil where below the surface, it's creating those that loamy structure. Oh, OK. <laughs> so the loam the is almost kind of like the byproduct and the bodies, the billions of bodies that are breaking down. Yeah, and they're making glues. And yep. they're, yeah, it's almost like the the gel and the glues of everything yep. from the bodies. Yep. That that's and, and they make that's... it themselves too. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And that that's it. That's the that's that's what we're looking for. That's what's regulating all our ecosystems. That's what's buffering every element in this earth through all cycles. Is that? That is everything. So when we destroy that, when we till, when we put synthetics, when we monoculture, when we do all those things, we're destroying that soil structure where it can't be that buffer, that keystone for all elements in the earth anymore. And so then we lose that loamy, we lose the structure, and now we have the dust bowl. We have erosion. We have all these devastating um, environmental effects. We have desertification right? That yeah. it causes extreme weather patterns. We have destruction when we destroy soils, what it's trying to do, which is create that buffer to all the cycles through those glues, through that biology. And so we've been destroying that, you know, with industrial revolution. We've been farming. We've been destroying all that, which is controlling everything in our world. Everything. From, from every, you name it, it's coming back to that. It's coming back to our agricultural systems and how we're treating the soil. There's nothing bigger. There's nothing bigger. There's nothing. That's why I'm on this train. That's why Absolutely I, nothing. I needed to find something that really stuck with having a real purpose. Pun intended. And and an intention. And I just I never really knew knew what it was, but but when I was little, I always would look at like the guy that had a little bit more land or the guy that might have had a tractor or a guy that was had a garden. I'm like, you know, there's something about what they're doing that is that is that is good, you know. Um, but also. I noticed that they had a big house and they had lots of cars and they had lots of toys and their children at school always had the nicest clothes. And and I just was kind of like, OK, so so they also. They, 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 they make a good living is what I'm trying to get at too. For people that are trying to find the thing that, that they can be passionate about and also find a good living is really what I'm kind of like my mission in yeah. that because I've always struggled with um, living, like living uh, as far as like being able to say, pay my rent or pay my bills um, I'm always asking people, like when I go up to people, like, "Hey, like, like, what do you do? Like, what do you do to get money? You know, like, what do you do for a living?" Um, I don't know, and, and that's becoming more popular, like on social media, where mm -hmm. the, you've got like these social influencers that are like, "Hey, how much do you make a year?" Or like, "Hey, what do you do for a living?" And even like at the permaculture convergence, I I even just found myself trying to ask people, like, "Hey, like, how did you get the money?" to get here and the gas to get here, <laughs> you know, like, cause things are becoming so expensive. I'm just kind of like, like, how do you, how do you live? 
you know, and I, I don't know what it is. And I'm trying to get like interested in, in other people's lifestyles to figure out like, what's the thing that helps people get more comfortable. And um, I think for me that this, this soil thing, the, the, the fertilizer, because I, I haven't been, been saying fertilizer, but I know it's, it's a big thing. And so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm talking about it correctly legally because they're, it's it's kind of like the cannabis industry where it's a little bit regulated. Um, you say fertilizer and that comes with rules, permitting, regulations. It's like that word is owned. Got it. That word itself, just the fertilizer word is owned. Um, just like saying organic, like just putting organic on on it. I, I've had so many kickbacks and, and red flags with just saying organic um, because that word is owned. Um, well, this is regenerative. This ooh. is a biofertilizer that is regenerative. Like regenerative. That's, not, that's not even like a debate because, that's huge. because you have biology in this. This is, you know, living yeah. regenerative. And as far as like money, regenerative agriculture is, is how our farmers are going to start being more abundant. If yeah. it's not just saving money, now, not spending as much. But um, regenerative ag for sure is going to change that income, which is what is needed, obviously. Yeah. Oh, it's got to because the the prices for fertilizers are going up. The the they're they're not subsidizing as much anymore. Governments are not subsidizing as much anymore because they're going into debt because they're they're using and their food. land's getting destroyed. So how how many more seasons do they have left of it? They know they don't have that many more left. Yeah. You yeah, know exactly. Um, and I, and I wanted to find something that I could scale, uh, you know, like, like I said, I've been able to make a good living, uh, hundred, hundred K a year, 150 K a year now reaching 200, 250 K. Of course, that's the business that's gross. That's not necessarily what I'm taking home. Um, but that is the gross of say like this, this company, um, which is not a one man show. It, it, I do a lot of the work. But that's also why I, I, I have this this urge and, and want to build this cooperative organization because everybody can do what I do. They just have to they have to unplug a little bit and, and not be so scared to to kind of to 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 live, you know, to to live free, to live more free. And mm -hmm. it is it is scary because people want health care and they want benefits and they want stability, but how <laughs> can we provide that in say this kind of, in, in this kind of industry? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to help get out of, out of, you know, Moringa is, is still in its infancy, you know, at $20 billion, it's still very, very small and very young. And how do we get uh, Moringa farmers and people in the Moringa industry or even just in the agriculture industry um, to have the ability to take care of their families like that without being subsidized because they're getting paid to use those 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 synthetic fertilizers. So that's that's kind of what I'll make sure that I say is is because um, I asked Akobo about that. And he said, just say natural fertilizer. Or bio, bio, and then I like what you said, where you said bio fertilizer. I like saying bio stimulant, and then natural fertilizer, but also now just even re incorporating regenerative. Yes, in, that, in this conversation, as it's, and this is this is regenerative, regenerative. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got a lot of people that are like, "How do I make this at home?" And then a lot of people that are like, I don't care what it is. I don't care what's in it. It's weird. Business is so mm. weird because for me to sell this, I I almost, and I've had to step away from putting Moringa as the main thing, as much as I want to say Moringa leaf extract as the main, main thing, that's actually kind of like not what sells it. What sells it is is the result so so it's weird i'm having to yeah. with it with That's... myself with how i market and talk about it is really having to sell the end result yes because when you're applying this you're regenerating our ecosystems and our health um you're literally building up the soil versus when you would 
put on, God forbid, a synthetic chemical fertilizer, you're degenerating your ecosystem. And you're degenerating your plants you're growing and you're degenerating your own health. So yeah. by using this, because it's biologically based, you're regenerating your ecosystem and, and the plants. You're bringing up that nutrient density and those medicinal compounds. And then being able to say that in a way that people understand is really that, that, that language barrier that I'm trying to reach. Because as I'm also trying to understand it, I'm also trying to get others on board with it and understanding it as well, but very simply um, in order for for people to just not have any hesitation mm -hmm. to 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 click the button and, and buy it because that's what's keeping this 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 alive this company um as we're in the winter time right now and I don't have a lot of greens every year I've kind of gone through this cycle of trying to figure out how do we maintain sales how do we keep the lights on how do we keep the business running while people are focused on you know holidays and family and other things um and so I'm studying uh, a couple other companies that are in the kind of like the same space as as this because you know people come to my website to buy powder to green mm -hmm. to buy the green powder and buy the capsules but that's because what I talked about for many many years um and as I'm growing and scaling the company I've got to get a way for us to have a steady cash flow all year um, that's not affected by like, say the season. And I really feel like that's something that, that, that can be like this, which is in a bottle, something like this, which we can produce in the container ships. But also the biggest thing for me is the USDA certification. Um, because now I can finally say it's organic and it's just, it's just like, it took a Kobo many years to get the certification. It took over three years, three, four years. And even then it took a whole year for the inspector to come out, you know? So yeah. um, it's not taken any, not, not taken lightly. Like I'm taking it really so, serious with, with the team, um, with him, you know, really wanting to partner with me on this project and to really be uh, an in-between between the, the big guys and the backyard growers, that's kind of like where I'm kind of finding myself and, and, and for the, you know, the ladies that are just, you know, trying to keep their pothos alive and their podocarpus alive and their, you know, dracaenas and all their, in, all the indoor plants, which I need to put a little bit more indoor plants in here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that whole market with, with the indoor plants thing is huge. And so organic is, is important. And, you know, I, I don't want to buy anything in the store unless it's organic. I, I want to grow my own food, but organic is important. But what's important to understand with organic, organic isn't regenerative. So organic is a system with, with rules and regulations that took them 12 years to solidify. And what it's saying is I'm not going to use pesticides. I'm not going to use chemicals, but what it is also saying is it doesn't necessarily regenerate our ecosystem. And that's why there is regenerative because organic wasn't enough. So having your thing certified organic is amazing and great. However, it it's more than organic. It's, it's regenerative. Ooh, and that's okay. the, I get that's what you're saying. Difference. I get what you're saying. It's like, yeah. it's like what we would say, like beyond organic, it's even, that well, whole beyond organic, organic, I think that ship sailed, but but then regenerative is really what you're saying. Is, yeah. Is and wrong. again, I don't want to say organic isn't great because I wouldn't <laughs> buy vegetables in the store if it wasn't organic, but it's only telling you that they followed the rules not to apply glyphosate, not to apply chemicals. They didn't grow it by increasing the nutrient density or increasing the ecosystem health or building the soil, or understanding that level of it to it. They don't have to with that regulation. They don't have to care about the ecosystem and organic. So when we say regenerative, not only are we doing everything organic is doing, but we're, do we're going farther where we're regenerating our ecosystem and regenerating our health because the way we are growing 
with regenerative is increasing that nutrient density and the medicinal compounds. So this is this is beyond organic. And oh, um, I love that. Yeah, you, it's important to it. understand that. And that's why we have regenerative now, because organic isn't enough. Organic was just something layered on top of yes. conventional synthetic to say, can we do this, but not put on the chemicals? But it wasn't saying we also want to understand and mimic nature. Because in organic, you can do monoculture. In organic, you don't have to rebuild the soil and rebuild everything while you're doing it. So organic really just came in to just counteract that chemical synthetic fertilizers that people didn't want. Wow, that's that's huge. That's a sound bite right there because <laughs> you actually get what organic in that industry is because instead of using, say, like the 120 or so chemicals, organic, like you say, it, it can still use like 60 of them. Yes. And and you can still uh, create a greenhouse that had glyphosate um, on, oh. on the land. So there, you know, it, there's some shady parts about it, um, but that's why there's regenerative. Okay. Because this is not, I just recently about. learned this. Um, when wheat and oats are 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 coming to market when they're about to be harvested um some some farmers most farmers are actually spraying glyphosate yes. to dry yep. it out yeah before yep. the harvest this is nuts and you wonder why we have so many health issues why our gut microbiome is so wiped out like if you look at our health and when we started Chemical and Green Revolution, it's parallel with our health issues and the way we were we are growing our food today. And then that correlates with our ecosystem and our planet health as well. And again, this has happened in such a short amount of time. Such a short time. Such a yeah. short amount. And it's not too late to save it. It's not like they've they're a complete parasite and taken over. So so if it's organic, they can't use glyphosate, right? Well, if you're in, I, and I'm not, I'm not an organic expert. I'm not in that realm at all. I'm in, yeah. I'm in regenerative, but I do know like for indoor greenhouses, they don't have to wait the three years for that glyphosate to dissipate like they do on an outdoor grow. They can grow right away. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there's a couple other weird things in organic. And again, I'm not going to, like, I'm not taking anything against hey, organic. I buy is, organic. This is just entertainment. We're just having fun. We know that yeah. we're, I'm not a doctor. I we're buy not. organic. But what I really want to do is grow my own food and know where it came from. It's about knowing. It's about knowing, yeah. especially what we're eating, too. Um, because, wow. And that's that's deep because... That's why a lot of foods and a lot of veggies have gone to that greenhouse hydroponic way. Oh, don't get me started on hydroponic. Oh, so crap. Okay, well, we'll, like, we'll go ahead and save that for another conversation. Well, no, I, I can. I'm just saying, I am, yeah. I am so against hydroponic on so many levels. Wow. And, and I just saw one... something about kale being one of the tox most toxic. And I eat a lot of kale um, yeah. and you so know, from the I store because of its happening. hydroponic grill. I think what's happening is Right now in our culture, we're all really wanting information and education in our world, right? Yeah. Especially after COVID. We want to know about this. And what's happening is these hydroponic companies, different initiatives are getting to people faster than some of the regenerative information. So people hear, oh, growing food, easy, in water, indoors, so easy. And then they just default and think, that's that's good but in actuality it is the opposite of every direction we want to go jeez and it, it's it's really bad and those hydro systems run off chemical synthetic fertilizers because they're so unnatural they have to because they're not mimicking nature at all it's a soilless system that is the farthest you can get from mimicking nature that you, that you can go. So these systems are the opposite of mimicking nature. They're the opposite of regenerative. They're using chemical 
uh, fertilizers because it can't sustain itself any other way. And unfortunately, people that are tending to just want to understand and do good things and grow their own food, they're, they're, they're jumping on this without knowing mm. of, of what really hydroponic is. Wow. Wow. This is huge. So I'm really glad to be getting in this space because this is helping me to open up my business, my conversation, my soil. knowledge, because I, I kept myself in a box with with just moringa but now having this product now is allowing me to talk about this and how we can fix it through yeah. this potential product so uh, that's that why have. this product is is regenerative because you're working with soil you're mimicking nature you're nature. bringing the life back into the system and so when we okay. say hydroponic we can't get any more opposite of regenerative. Right. yeah yeah, but the very first thing I ever grew, not hydroponic, it was more aquaponic. So the aquaponics was... great. Aquaponics. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I used a fish tank, my no, ten gallon fish good. tank. Yeah. And I actually, um, my very first grow operation was in my window, kind of like a window like this, and um, I took uh, just plastic bottles. I cut the bottom and I and I strung them with 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 a chain, and I had like five or six bottles hanging kind of like just in a chain. And then I stuck those little clay, clay, little, little soil, oh, little clay soil pellets in yeah. there. And then I put a tomato plant in each one of them. And I had, had the water going into the fish tank. And then I had a sub tank on the floor. And then that sub tank pumped the water up to the top. And then and then that flowed back into the fish tank. And then the fish tank overflowed into the sub tank. And then that sub tank pumped it back up to the top. I set that up. That was my first operation. I had a full window of tomatoes in my window. It was awesome. Yeah. So aquaponics is definitely not hydroponics. Okay. Aquaponics is great. It's, it's mimicking nature with the, the fish poo and all, all the aquatic plants. And in fact, some are arguing it may be superior because it's bringing in those micro aquatic microorganisms that we may need a bit more of in our soil systems. And really with the aquaponics being um, potent tonics, took it to a next level by doing a dual root zone of having what you said with the pellets, but then having soil in that system as well. So that that biology links in to it. And so when we when we talk aquaponics with aquaculture and aqu aqua microorganisms, that's that's great. That's really good. Really good. Yeah. good, good. Um, so the pellet, uh, that's that's one of the delivery systems for this that I really want to get down and I want to teach people because, you know, putting the powder down is good. It blows away a little bit, but by putting a little bit into soil, watering that down a little bit, and then taking that and putting that on the plants, it helps to not only give it a little dressing of topsoil, but but then conditions that soil and that that those microorganisms. Um, essentially, what what I'm saying too is that this liquid is almost activating the powder because there are proteins and bacteria and enzymes in the powder that are getting activated uh, by feeding it not only water, but also the, the added biostimulant in the liquid form, which are already alive. It's just yes. boom, like it's it's pluming, like it's it's activating the powder. So that's why we have this two-step system in the bio box where it's like condition the soil, structure the soil, um, put the vitamins and the minerals, of course, because that's also yeah. what's in the powder, the vitamins and the minerals, um, and then Which activate it with the spray. And so yeah. putting the spray and the water down is is really having a really complete system. Yeah. So what you have, what you're adding, what we're looking at uh, under the microscope is organic matter. And that's coming from the moringa leaf, super important food for the microbes. We're seeing the minerals super important. That's the chemistry. That's the food for the minerals. And now we're looking directly at the biology, the workers, the actual chemists of the whole system of nature. So we're, we're putting all of this in that biostimulant. You're getting all three of those things, organic matter, minerals, and biology when you use it. 
Right. And now what are the living things? What are they eating? Are they eating off of the rock? Are they eating off the minerals? Yes. Yes. And that's what I thought. Organic okay. Matter. And organic matter as well. That's, uh, that's exactly what I thought. So we can see the organic matter here, the clumps that you see. Well, let me find one. And then you can see we've been looking at the minerals that look oh, like yeah. diamonds, right? Yeah. So right here, there's some organic matter in the middle, and that's coming yeah. from your moringa. And then we have the minerals and then all the things moving. I don't, I don't know if it's showing up too well on your oh, side. Oh, yeah. No, it's showing up great. It's showing okay, up great. Like, we've been able to see this the whole time. It's so beautiful to see it. Those it's are so the grateful. chemists. Those are, those are what's responsible for extracting all that nutrition from the minerals, from the organic matter and delivering it to the plant. So that's what we've been missing in our food growing systems with how we grow food right now. Wow. wow. We've been missing the chemist, the biology. The biology. And that's, and that's also one reason why I call it a companion plant and I, th I throw um, some seeds in each box, I put about 20 seeds or so in each box. Not only is it a supplement that people can eat, um, but by planting the Moringa in their garden or by putting a seed in their pot, like say if they're growing like an ornamental or they're growing something, they can end up throwing a seed in that pot, that'll sprout, but then they can also begin to use that as added bio, bio stimulation for, for the soil in that pot as well. And they can cut that tree back over and over and over again in the pot or in the ground. Outside, it's easier easier to do a chop and drop. Yep. Um, you don't really want to constantly kind of like chop and drop in a pot because that'll 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 bring a lot of pests and flies and and bacteria and mold and things like that on the surface. But um if if they chop it, you know, taking it to a compost, composting and adding that into the soil, then bringing that back into their system as a composted, decomposed living compost, that's really good too. So yeah, so you're adding the organic matter back yeah. into the soil, which is the food, one of the foods for the microorganisms. So we've also not been adding organic matter into our ecosystems as well. We like to yeah. weed, we like to pull things out, we like to take away when really nature cycles it back in. Right. So, One of the yeah. things I, I see is like the strawberry industry. Like here, I'm I'm in the middle of strawberry country. We have more strawberry fields than in this town than anywhere else in the whole world. There's more strawberry farms in Plant City than any other place in the whole world. Um and so seeing this cycle now, I've been living out here in the middle of strawberry fields for the past four years, and I'm seeing the cycle now. What's really terrible is that every season they burn all the plastic. It's nuts. There will be plumes of black smoke in the air, and they all do it at the same time. They all get together and they're like, all right, y'all, we're going we're gonna to burn all our plastic this week. <laughs> and it's terrible. Like, it's just burning up huge huge fields of plastic they just pile it and pile it pile it up and you see plastic as far as you can see in these strawberry fields just to see them to burn it up every year is nuts but then also that they're growing in sand and every few years they have to they have to leave the plot empty right because they can't use it anymore they have to let the weeds kind of take over for a couple years but in some of the organic plots, I've been noticing, oh, that's an organic plot. Oh, that's not an organic plot. Oh, that's an organic plot. Oh, that's not an organic plot. I can start to see the differences between, uh, say, like um, we have an organic strawberry farm out here called uh, Passions Organics Strawberry Fields. They have 50 acres, their main acreage, but then they've got a couple of supportive, supportive uh, organic farms around. And I can tell which ones are theirs. Uh, because they grow sun hemp in the summer. Mm. So they're they're regenerating the soil at least every summer. They'll have sun hemp and then they till that, although they're tilling it, they're tilling it back into the soil. So they are adding some organic matter. Got it. And well, if we're talking Florida, 
soil, we're talking about sandy soil. Yeah. So when we're dealing with sand, we're dealing with a very low CEC capacity, cation exchange capacity. So there's very, very few receptors available for the ionic exchange to happen in the soil. So when we add organic matter into the soil, we are feeding biology, but we're also, especially if we have sandy soils, we're increasing that CEC capacity as well by, by creating more receptor sites for the ions and cations to exchange. Wow. So you're really kind of like um, becoming an expert, especially in Florida, Florida soils, especially? Uh, now that I've moved here, um, I, I came from Hawaii previously. Yeah. Understanding more of working with uh, sandy soils of Florida, because in Hawaii, we don't really need to add too much minerals because we're on a volcano. But if you're here in Florida, you do need to add those minerals because you don't have any. So basalt and things like that is very important here in Florida versus Hawaii. Like, forget it. You don't need to be adding minerals and basalt. We live on the minerals of the volcano. So yeah, learning a bit more about these sandy soils here in Florida. So organic matter in Florida, very important. Increasing carbon, very important. And then also getting more minerals in the sand is, is more important in Florida than in other areas. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was just thinking before we go, we'll, we'll probably go in about 10 minutes or so. Um, I would love to tell others about our story about how how we even first t spoke I, you just helped remind me like holy crap that's right um because yeah. i get a call you know a couple years ago it was like two three years well ago. it was actual at, at, um after kohler did his video it was right after so it was 2020 it was literally like march april maybe may of 2020 yeah. and i get this call and it's kind of muffled and it's, and then it kind of in and out and you're like, I'm, I'm in Hawaii, you know, I'm at the top of a mountain. I've got my, my, my internet phone. I'm holding it up. No cell reception where I live. <laughs> but we had a conversation. I remember that conversation. And then we had a chance to reconnect at the permaculture convergence Yep. And um, a couple of weeks ago, which was really great, got to see you face to face. And now we're really locked in on Instagram. I know I know who you are and I know your profile <laughs> and um, and, and the fact that you actually are now working at um, Chosen. Chosen Chosen Retreat yeah, in Sebastian. Chosen Retreat. It's in yep. Sebastian. Is it a place where people can come and visit? Um. If they want to hit me up, I can give them a tour. What we're doing, though, is we're really working to cultivate community out there in that area. So if you're around that area, please hit us up and just go to our website and sign up for our email, which will notify you when we have events. And what we're doing is every Friday, we're gathering for a garden volunteer time. We're really cultivating the community and education. And then once a month, first Friday of the month, I put on a lunch and learn where we do a different topic every uh, month. And then we also serve you a farm to table meal. So you can buy that ticket alone and just come to the lunch and learn, or you can volunteer in the morning and get a free ticket to the lunch and learn. Well, beautiful. What I'll do is if you, if you DM me on Instagram, or even if you text me um, some information, <clears throat> your email, the number. Um, I will I, I will put that in the description of this video here because it's pretty much been you and I on spotlight here. And perfect. Um, I love it. And what and this ended up becoming an impromptu uh interview podcast. And and thanks for letting everybody know where they can find you. Um, yeah, thanks for letting me come show my microscope and the the fertilizer. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for just proving everything that we believe is, is true. And I'm even more, even more in this 100% taking this, this bio box to the moon. I'm really, really focusing in what I'm going to do for the remainder of the day is I'm working on my labels. So I actually have a, 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 a really big expensive label machine that kind of helped me with this, this label here. Um, it's really shiny, glossy label. 
Um, I'm going to get these more professionally uh, made myself. I, I make everything myself. And so I'm going to have it printed right now. This, this one that's on here is just a regular kind of like a flat paper. But when you're dealing with liquids and things like that, it, it doesn't look as good. And, and so I have a nice glossy paper. So I'm going to be working on the labels for the rest of the day, getting, getting both of these labels redone and really nice. Uh, because we're really trying to scale and grow this part of the company as our major, major product. And that's kind of what I was saying is when someone calls me and they're like, hey, can I get some powder? I need to put the systems in place that's going to 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 get them the powder or the capsules or the tea or anything that they might want in a very easy delivered way. Um, but I'm just trying to, trying to figure that out. And that's why we created the collective. So it's a place where the members they're already in and they see they're, they're like, Hey, I need capsules. When somebody in the members area says, Hey, I need capsules. Other members jump in on that and say, I've got capsules. Here's my price. And so it's, it's like a marketplace where multiple people can say, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. So that way others who are looking who didn't necessarily make a post can then begin to buy from those members directly, directly to those members. Um, I'm trying to find a way where I'm not seeing money in that way, but I'm seeing money in, in a special way, the way that I'm trying to really develop because I'm, I can only do so much. So all the orders that are coming in, it's like a kilo here, a kilo there, a kilo here of powder, powder, powder. I'm like, wow, this is, like just one kilo of powder can take a lot of hours, you know, to go from tree to harvest to drying from drying. It's got to, you know, well, it's got to be cleaned and washed and then dried. And then it's got to be sifted to get all the sticks and stems out. Then it has to be blended. Then it needs to be vacuum sealed, you know, and, and then, and then labeled, and then shipped. I mean, these are, this is a very labor intensive process for a kilo. And I, I probably shipped out a hundred kilos from my own supply between October and November. I mean, it's not a light, it's not a light feat by any means. And so how do I, how do I decentralize that load as a leader, as a CEO of this company and curate all of these customers and people that want high quality Moringa from me. And that's where the collective, the group comes in because we have a platform now that's, that's, you know, behind a paywall essentially that helps to keep the company running to where when somebody, you know, contributes $25 a month as a member, they're helping to fuel the opportunity to, to, for more people to gather, you know, in this, in this space. Um, and, and, assur and assures them that they're going to get high quality Moringa from a local farmer who has it in stock because that farmer who said that they had it in stock now might be out like me. And so when someone is always calling me, Hey, do you have a kilo of powder? Do you have a kilo of powder? I run out, I run out quickly. And so, so do other farmers who aren't even at the scale that I'm at, they're running out quickly because this, the demand for fresh and local Moringa is so high. I have to also educate the, 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 um, the buyer, you know, cause they just want it quick. They want it fast and they want it easy. Um, but they're not buying it on Amazon. They're, they're not getting it from the huge machine of the, of this, of this synthetic industry. When they come into our ecosystem, they're coming into the the realness of getting to know your farmer, getting to know like seasons. You know, it's like I have people that want 10, 50, 100 kilos from me right now in the dead of winter when all my trees are dormant. And I said, well, it would have been nice if you placed that order with me in July. <clears throat> I had an abundance, you know, of leaves. So it's like, wait till July. And so as an, an informed uh customer of moringa you have to know when to get it when the season is right because you know 
we can walk into the store and get avocados all year. You know, we can walk in the store. We're just used to being able to call. But then when I get that call for 10 kilos, I'm like, dang, I wish you would have just called me in the middle of summer when I had so much of it. I had, I had, I couldn't even harvest all of my trees at once. I had so many greens over the summer that I, because my dry room is not that big. And so I had to, I had to only, I could only harvest a little bit at a time to then flow out, to then refill it back up, to then flow out, to refill it back up. So one of the shortages even that my collective myself is facing is the shortage of, of drying space. And, um, and so we need more, more spaces that members, cause we have a lot of trees in the neighborhoods around Florida, Texas, California, Arizona, we have a lot of trees and a lot of people are calling me with trees, um, but they don't have the space or the ability to actually get it to a dry form. And so that's what we're, we're needing because there may be people that, that don't want to grow or don't want to provide their space to grow, but might have a dry space. And then there's people that have grow, but then don't have a dry space. <clears throat> so that's a part of my business is, is the people work, the people resources, I'm having to put those systems in place at the same time, trying to figure out, you know, how to scale the company. Um, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's funneling down into one product. And that's really what I'm focusing with is, is I, I, I can get, I can easily get a retired, retired person to put bio boxes together, right? But to have a retired person in here that's just kind of retired uh, is not in that kind of like pump in, you know, I've got this order, this order, this order, this order, this mm. order. You know, it's kind of tough to even rally the troops when when there's so many moving parts between this product, this product, this product, this product, this product. I've got 50 different products on my website. That's that's 50 different labels. That's that's 50 different packages, 50 different types of packages. That means that we're having to order 50 different things every week, every other week. And it's just having to simplify something for the company that we can all latch on to. Because here's the thing. We have it priced out now to where everybody can can eat off of this, essentially, because even our members, our affiliates, and all the people that are helping to sell these boxes with us, they're making uh, $5 a box. So as an affiliate, if you sign up as an affiliate and you help sell these boxes, you'll earn $5 a box. And so without having to do anything, you can make $5 a box. And, um, and, and we've really kind of got it down to that science of you know, the cost of the bottle, the cost of the label, the cost of the PVC band that goes on top, the cost of the package, the cost of this label, you know, the cost of this box and keeping it really, really simple to where we have an affordable product that we can scale. Um, that's something that even our members can begin to fulfill because even, you know, here we are two years in to this, this real collective operation and the complexities of fulfilling an order. So like what I've been really getting, getting to with my website over the last couple of years is, is, um, is that fulfillment by member, the fulfillment by member operation, where if you have Moringa and if you can get it to a final product, essentially you can fulfill orders on the website, right? But there's a lot of quality control that's involved with that. Um, when, when an order comes into the website, and and there's a picture associated with that 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 product that that person checked out. I've got a hundred people asking me, well, do I have to have it in this package? Why can't I ship it in this package? Or why do I have to have it in this label? Can't I have it, you know, just with a with a with a heart on it, <laughs> you know? And it's just like people bought what they see. And they have to get what they see. It can't come in a, in a completely different package, and it can't come in a completely different color, you know, it's got to be consistent, it's consistent, consistent. And so I, th I think with this, with this box, we can actually lock in consistency 
Um, we have the ability to supply members in bulk with biostimulants. So if a member was to buy or anybody was to buy um, the biostimulant, we have it in, in big, big bottles. Let me see if I have, have one inside. I don't have one inside here. I have them all outside, but they're, they're in five gallon buckets. You know, they come in five gallon. They, they, in, in international terms, it's 20 liters, 20 liters. It comes in a 20 liter bucket. And um, we have the ability to wholesale the, the extract and the powder in large quantities to people that want to break it down to make these boxes. So that way I can begin to travel. I can also begin to have workers that are very easily able to, to fulfill orders. Uh, when a bio box order comes in from California, I want the member or the supplier to be able to fill that and make that in California. Uh, versus me having to ship everything from Florida. You know what I'm saying? So um, we're just trying to figure out all those logistics as a company. I'm growing as a as an entrepreneur, you know, getting out of out of my uh, my hippie phase, my homeless <laughs> phase, my dread head phase. <laughs> well, you know. Kendrick, I just have to say this is, you know, I've been following you now since, you know, we, I contacted you and I admire your tenacity so much and you are really rebuilding the systems and we're here with you and witnessing it. And it's it's a huge undertaking what you're doing, but if anyone's going to do it, it's, it's going to be you. And where we're headed in regenerative ag and regenerative soil is exactly what we're doing here today, which is we're at a point of education and technology where we're not able to verify what we're buying and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so just like we were able to look all of us together at this biostimulant live, we, this is where it's headed. And so if all these products coming out, we're not at the level where we don't understand what's in it and how to evaluate it. And so this is where we're, we're going with citizen scientists and having this education and technology. I can now take a compost. I can take a soil. I can take a biofertilizer. And we can now see in real time, like transparency as, is at an all time high. And so you releasing this product and, and standing behind its regenerative nature is a really big deal. And then we can be that transparent to show live what is in it and, and how it, it's mimicking nature. So that's wow. where we're headed. What, what amazing, amazing day. I never would have thought it would have turned out like this, but I'm so happy that it did and that you were here sharing with us. Where can, where can we find you? I'm on Instagram. I just like to document for fun on there because I, I work my full-time job being um, the director of regenerative ag at Chosen. But my Instagram that I document is called Confessions from the Soil. So Confessions Say that one more time. It just kind of, it, it kind of goes up and down a little bit with your sound. Oh, sorry. It's Confessions with an S, Confessions from the Soil. That's it. Confessions on from the Soil. Yeah. Everybody follow Moti here on Instagram. We've been live on Instagram this whole time as well. Uh, my phone died over here uh, from Facebook, but at least we're live on Instagram still. <laughs> Check out Moti from Confessions from the Soil. We're going to put it. the information here in the description for everybody to be able to contact her. Go get a tour at Chosen. It's there in Sebastian on the east coast of Florida. And we'll also see if we can't get you to come out here for a field trip and even just have some sort of retreat. Actually, one of the things that we're planning for the uh, for our regional permaculture peeps is the um, the event that we want to have here in the middle of January. So we want to have an event here mid-January. We're going to send you some information and everybody. Because um, when, we, when we went to our breakout groups, we went to Tampa group, and we ended up having like 20 or 30 people uh, in the Tampa, in the Tampa group that, that want to meet up. And so I offered my place as a host. So in, in about the middle of January, and I kind of want to do it like a monthly thing where it's like a permaculture meetup here for at least locals and for anybody, even if you're in California and you want to meet up with Tampa permies, you know, come out. So, um, so in about two to three weeks, we're going to have an event here. And if you can't make that one, we're going to we're going to, we're going to keep, you know, keep in touch and everybody follow Moti at Confessions from the Soil and uh, look up Chosen. 
I did go to the website. It looks great. It's amazing. yeah, it's a new project, um, but we're really dedicated to regenerative culture awesome. and education. So yeah, cool. sign up for the email. Yes, and thank sign you so much, email. Kendra. Yeah, I've chosen, and I'll put all that information in the description. And I really hope that you have a beautiful, blessed rest of your day. Thank you for allowing me on here. Really impromptu. Really impromptu. Yeah. It was super fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Kendrick. All right. Thanks. We'll talk soon. Okay. Ciao. And thanks, uh, everybody, as well. We'll go ahead and close up here. And I hope everybody has a great day. And you learned a lot today. Thanks to Moti and our friends, Jack, and all the other members that came and joined us. I appreciate you. And everybody have a great day. And enjoy yourself. Talk more soon. Peace, love, and prosperous growth. Ciao.